certainly hope you guys came ready to play some D&D &D because we're gonna... Oh, yeah. I thought we were playing Battle Jack. Um, mm. Hang on. No, man, Battle Lords <laughs> of the 23rd century. We're going strangely old school. Yep. Dave, can you adjust your mic a little bit? Yeah, Sound is it... Uh, oh, here we go. Hold on. Thanks for... Uh, yeah, thanks for the reminder. I appreciate that. That's All right. Sounds a lot better now. Yeah. But my mic was like two feet away from me. <laughs> All right. Um, well, welcome back, guys. Let's do a quick recap of, uh, of the last session. You guys launched an amphibious assault on the Sea Ghost. It was pretty sweet. Um, you... Sweet is a harsh word. Well, it, it was, was, I mean, it, it was, was definitely so hairy for sure. But you guys did a pretty <laughs> good job. You successfully signaled to the ship. You uh, made the decision after uh, some time waiting that to, to go out and execute the assault because you didn't want to wait for them to come to you anymore, which was great. Um, you, you were pretty sneaky about how you boarded the ship. I mean, Theo's rope trick. Uh, that set the whole hostile takeover off was pretty sweet where he wrapped it around the guy's foot and then uh, Runar and Theo dropped the crate in the water and pulled pulled Jimmy overboard. That was pretty sweet. Um, there was a lot of esophageal uh, skewering by Byron, especially... That, over and over again. Yeah, with the, uh, the Dragonborn especially. <laughs> that guy was... like You could have played that guy's face like a flute. Yeah, he, a couple yeah. more staples, and then Zed would have just come right off. That's true. Um, the crow, the crow nest featherfall attack was pretty sweet. That Eren executed after he shoved the the guy out of the crow's nest forty feet, and then landed on him and crushed him. That was sick. Um, you, Theo shoved the captain off the ship. I mean, it was it was a pretty awesome fight. You guys did a great job. There was definitely uh, it was definitely a challenge for the team, and I think one of the Aside from Zolek, which was a, just a total losing, there was no way to win that encounter. Um, this was probably the biggest challenge that the, the Deg Gang has faced. Um, so that was pretty cool. At this point, you have successfully cleared the upper deck. Um, let's, uh, let's bring you guys into the map here. On the deck, there are multiple bodies, both of humans, dragonborns, and dragonborn, and even a baboon um, laying on the on the deck. You have successfully tightened a variety of the doors. I think m most of the doors, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just let me do this. I think all of the doors. We yeah, did. there's a door yep. here. There's a, there's an open door here. No, I think we without said, an actual door. There's no door on it. This right. one is, I think we were is move tightened. The boat over it. Yep, you yeah. were. That was talked about. There's a door here, closed, closed door here, closed door here, closed door here. A lot of doors. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, some of you are wounded. Some of you are um, just back to consciousness, Erin, after nearly dying. And uh, what would you guys like to do? I think we should search these bodies. See, I drank. Yeah, I. So we have. Uh, I. We. I searched. I searched the crow's nest guy. Hmm. You did. You I searched, searched him. You found a ruby ring and fourteen gold pieces. Theo searched yeah. the captain, uh, and basically found a ornate longsword with uh, sort of a porpoise motif and 58 gold pieces worth of coinage. I don't know if you took all of that, Theo, with the sword and everything, but um, that's what you I found. I did. I have it noted down. Okay, so you did take the sword. Okay. But that's it so far. And I have drank my last healing potion. Okay. Um, yeah, Go ahead. Let's... I'll move up to the dragon board and do the end. What's? I'm gonna like look into this door. Way the the one that's open, without a door. Okay. Um, as, well. um, as you look in there, the stairs descend. To the next level. Okay. 
It's just like a entryway into a stairs. Yes. Okay. Give me one second here. Um, Dave. Yeah. Just just as a recap, I used one portion. You have one dose remaining, remaining correct? Of my okay. Yep. Yeah. And then um. Yeah, I'm wondering if we should take a short rest up here. How are you guys doing? Our you know, need a rest. We need to secure this hatch. Is anybody like almost dead though? <laughs> Define almost. <laughs> like, like I'm pretty fucked up. Under a one blow of a sword. Cause... It depends on who's swinging. Yeah. Um. Like, I could punch myself and probably knock myself out. Yeah, Theo <laughs> will, will, uh, will call for me. Maybe we should just rest for a second. Because the warlock always wants a short rest, though. That's true. Yeah, I could really use a short rest as well. Um, um, I would like to search the barbarian, if we haven't done that already. The, the dragonborn guy. Okay. Yep, I was just moving to do that. Okay, give me a second here. I had listed out all of the stuff that they have, but now I'm having a hard time finding it. I think it's, you'll find it under uh, table G in the <laughs> Dungeon Master's Guide. Yep. <laughs> just, just do one roll for each of you? Just, yep, yep. I think that's it seems totally legit. warranted. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, they obviously had like 20,000 gold on them, probably. <laughs> Normally, I would agree with you, but sadly, we're in Salt Marsh, and that's going to get us jack all but robbed. <laughs> yeah. One guy had shiny pebbles. There we go. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, so, who is, who's searching the Dragonborn? I will. Okay. Yeah, you fine. find, um, you don't even need to roll here. You find a longsword. Pretty plain looking, but effective. Uh, 21 gold pieces worth of coins. A crude scrimshaw figurine that seems to look like some sort of a, some sort of a four-legged animal. Maybe a wolf, maybe a, a lion, maybe. It's hard to tell. It's pretty, it's not very well made. Um, so it's made out of bone, if you're not familiar with what scrimshaw is. Uh, and he also, uh, Byron, as you search him, you pull out a, you pull out a strange card. Like, almost like a playing card. Uh, roll an Arcana check for me. That's not good. It's great. What are you talking about? Um, you, 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 it doesn't, you don't really get a sense of what this card is about, but somehow the, the image on the card is of a man um, holding a magnifying glass in one hand and a dagger in the other hand, and it kind of looks like you. You're like, oh, interesting. you kind of do a double take on it. Huh. Uh, and that's it. That's, that's all that's on the dragon board. Right. Um, hmm. Well, shit, let's keep looting. Let me check this this guy back. Yeah, Byron, you're over there. Which guy? Um, this guy right back here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that um, do, 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 do. that was Bloody Bjorn. Uh, he, you find a long sword, twelve silver pieces, twenty gold pieces. A lesser healing potion, a healer's kit, and, okay, a, that's handy. and a sweaty red silk bandana. <laughs> oh, that's a nice bandana. A little bit of a <laughs> little bit of blood on it. Um, how much money did you say he had again? Sorry. Twelve silver and twenty gold. Okay, I'm 
definitely taking the money in the... Anybody need a healer's kit? I already have one. I am not proficient with it. Can't hurt to have another one because I would imagine a healer's kit is, among other things, basically just a first aid kit, so you know, yeah. will eventually need supplies. I mean, do you have to be proficient with it? I think you could just own one, right? And then just do checks with it. I think it automatically stabilizes if you have it. If you so, succeed, it has, it. Each kit has 10 uses. As an action, you can expend one use of the kit to stabilize a creature that has zero hit points without having to make a wisdom medicine check. Oh, those are amazing. Yes, yeah, Steel will immediately take that if it's offered. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're nice. I, ha I have one already, so it can keep somebody from dying if they're Correct. like zero. It, it doesn't. It's need, pretty powerful, no actually. Room. Yeah, given our lack of dudes with healing spells, it's a great option. Um, is, are any of you guys proficient with nature? Let me uh, check. Actually, yes, I am. Theo is, rather. Theo, you, uh, what's your... What's your um, uh, survival for me. What would, what would be your, uh, your bonus to nature? Plus six. Oh, shit, yeah. You, uh, you quickly notice that the, the baboon pelt is in really nice condition. This looks like a very well-fed animal. And the, and the pelt reflects that. It looks like it could be worth money. You know, just kind of from where he's, he stayed kind of amid ship right now. He's like, <laughs> um, I'm going to go uh, check on the, uh, the wizard, but um, we might want to skin that baboon. It's probably worth money. The only problem is that it's, it got cut in half. It's in two pieces. <laughs> because we make a nice set of gloves. It's fine. <laughs> um, all right, so you're going to search the deck wizard? Small. I check the deck wizard. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, roll a in investigation check. Oh, yeah. He has 32 gold pieces worth of coinage. He's got a nondescript quarterstaff, a spell components pouch that has various spell components in it, a dagger that is well made, a bright green feather you find. And you also find a very, um, well, you're, you're a sailor, correct? I am. Yeah, you, uh, you, you find a very intricate an expensive, expensive looking gold plated compass. Yo is probably going to keep that. Does it does it point to that which you truly seek? <laughs> you have no idea yet. Don't worry about that. Oh, you're breaking up there, Michael. No. Um, Thea will worry about that. <laughs> exact same <laughs> breakup. And yeah. there is no reason for me to say it again, apparently. That's weird. It, it, your it's like he starts out good and then it trails off. Yeah. Yep. Very weird. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so you pocket the this compass. Eat. All right. Um, let's see. Is there any, are there any other bodies to loot? Yeah, Dave, there's this guy on the front okay. deck yep. next to the, on the other side of the baboon. I'd like to check him. Okay. Um, his name was simply Thug Number One. Uh, you find he's got a heavy crossbow. He has five bolts remaining. He's got a mace slung at his waist. A rapier laying next to him on the deck. 14 silver. 19 gold pieces. And as you kind of rifle through his shirt, you see that he's got a tiny silver icon of a raven on a piece of string around his neck. Looks to be made of silver, and it looks like a raven. Okay. I'm going to take that mace. Okay. And the money in the silver raven. Okay. 
Anybody want a crossbow? A heavy crossbow? <laughs> I don't. Mm. Nope. We should probably hold on to it and sell it. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, let's take it. I'll take it. Okay. Oh, and just like his rapier too, probably. Like his other weapons. I don't know. Yeah, I'll take, take the rapier too. Pile up the weapons. How are your so encumbrance uh, amounts looking right now? What should they be at? <laughs> um, I think you can carry without any penalties to movement. I think it's your strength times 15, I want to say. There's a chart for it. It's in so, the uh, player's handbook somewhere. Also, your the game uh, roll twenty character sheet should oh, tell yeah, it'll calculate like, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I think I'm it's stre I think it's strength times fifteen. I can look it I up. I feel like I just read that recently. Granted, many of my things that'd don't be great, have, Chad, like, if you could look that up. Yeah. Have, many of my things don't have weight properties on them. Well, I should probably add those in just to be re just to have yeah, some level I need of realism. To do that. Um, some let's see, some there's this, one yeah. more guy, I think, that hasn't been searched, maybe? This guy back he here? Thug up on that probably, yeah. Yep. Thug number three. Um, scimitar, light crossbow, five copper, twelve silver, three gold pieces. And as you, as you rifle through his pockets, you find something unexpected. A silver spoon with an M engraved on the handle. Hmm. I didn't get that. Did M? write that down? The letter M engraved on the I've handle. I've got it online, don't worry. Alright. Theo, did you write down everybody's loot? I did not. Okay. I got a good portion of them, but I don't have all of them, so... I got all of the stuff that uh, Theo picked up. Okay, I got everything I picked up, so... You guys are going to have to hire an accountant. I know. It's strength... Uh, st uh, uh, strength times 15. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. <clears throat> All right, so you've looted the bodies. Um, you don't... Well, everybody roll a perception check for me. Let's, let's start there. Yeah, while they're doing that, so while they're doing that, I want to, like, I'm going to check, uh, like, I'm not really going to go down, but I'm, like, looking and listening down this, okay. down this, uh, this hole, or this stairwell. Okay, go ahead and roll a perception check for me as well, you're in. Um... I don't, Byron, Runar, and Theo, you don't really hear much except for the ocean. Um, Aaron, you don't hear anything, but you see just a little bit of light. A faint glow of lantern light, maybe, coming from below decks. Okay. Do I get anything more with the 19? Sorry. Was, um, nope, hear. you can't hear anything when you're up on deck from below. You, all you hear is the, the sound of the ocean, the, the gentle lap of the, of the waves against the hull of the ship. All right. Um, I'm going to like try and get everyone together again um, in one spot so we can discuss further what we're planning on doing next. Absolutely. Theo is there for that. Um, I'm going to be like, guys, I think I think we should just go room to room. Search this whole entire ship. Okay. Where do you think we should start? We should start in an hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so we keep watch. We yeah. should take a second. Um, maybe set up here around the uh, main mast so that we can see everything. Yeah, just or somewhere where we can't be snuck up from behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you want to do you want to go up to the, the front where there's only a staircase, one single staircase yeah. to us? Yeah, yeah, maybe where there's only one way up and no we should behind us. Maybe see if we can't find something to barricade this stairwell with. Um, Is there not a yeah, let's use the boat. 
we could pile up the bodies over there. <laughs> oh, this downstairs one, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if we if we grab if we undo the boat, we could just use the exact rope that's holding it down and everything, just tip it up and just use the same rope and put it right just up. Just to check out loud, is there not an actual door that closes on that doorway? There is no door at all. Okay, just checking. Then yep, boat. Yeah, I'll, I'll craft it even because I I'm you know I'm a woodworker. I could, could mess around with that. I'll craft a door out of this boat. I think that's gonna take a little bit. Um, it'll be a makeshift super quick. <laughs> You're gonna try to build a door? Maybe uh, we hold on like, to the boat like because this wedge is like a barricade. All we using need is, the door. Yeah, all we need using to the do is slow them down. So. All right, uh, Byron, roll a carpenter's tools. Um, with with intelligence. Nice. That's so a we weird put the boat roll. in front of the door. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we unlatch it, like because you see the, the three pylons that go into the deck. You just take the take those out of the deck, tip the boat up, and then put them right back against the door in the same right. point. Got it. Yeah, no problem. You guys are you're able to, um, you know within reason uh and within a couple of minutes craft pull a couple of planks uh out of the probably the seats portions yeah. of the of the boat and you're able to nail them up against the door essentially creating a barrier not not really a door but a barrier nice. um you nail them to the to the frame not the door but the frame perfect um and you feel pretty pretty good about it should we do you think we need to pipe in the other doors we did. Uh, we did oh, okay. already. All right. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to sleep up on the, or just rest up on the front. You guys are going to uh, attempt for a short rest, correct? Short yeah. rest, yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Sounds good. Do we want to, so real quick, do we want to split up and have two people rest on the front and two people rest on the back? That I way think... somebody is able to keep watch on that doorway down below um, the front. And that way, if anybody were to, say, come up from the sides, the other group is able to see the other group's back. Um, I was thinking, if we all stayed on the front, I'll stay right above this doorway, and I won't rest. I, don't, I can't rest. I don't have a reason to rest. Sure. Like, I'm hurt, but I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna rest. Do I'm you, just gonna guard you guys. Do you yeah. have hit dice you could use? No. Oh, okay. I only have one. <laughs> so. yeah, I used all my hit die. Um, yeah, so four. I'm... Yeah, I'm not going to heal. Okay. Fair enough. Let's do it. All right. So um, you guys are able to take all of short rest. Yeah. So go ahead and, you know, if you, if you need to use a hit die, go ahead. Make sure you keep track. Um... If you're a warlock, you get your spell slots back. Shit. Come on. Bang, bang. Um, while we're on our short rest, um, would it be possible uh, for Theo to use his magic eyes just to see if anything and all the things we grabbed were magical? Yeah. you. The one thing that jumps out at you as magical, everything else is pretty mundane, but that compass, as you, as you roll that compass in your hands and look at it... Um, the compass has a small compartment under the dial. Uh, you're not exactly sure, but you, you, you get the sense. Actually, you are sure, aren't you? Let's see. With detect magic, you can detect. Does it also tell you the use of things? No. Um, oh, it at most cool. would tell you the, like, the school. Um, but I then could devote the rest of the uh, short rest to looking it over. Which would give you basically all of the information you need about it, correct? Yes, it uh, gives you at least the a, functional information. Yeah, I mean, it's a compass, obviously. There is there is a small compartment underneath it that you get the sense that you could you could fill it with something. Uh, and I'm going to... I wonder if you need to use Identify to learn the intricacies of it. Well, it's 
the way it's written, and I had to watch a video on this recently, is if you take a short rest, you will learn all the functional uses for a magic item that you spend the time working on. If you use identify, you can do it immediately, and you get, like, the full backstory. Okay. Um, all right. Well, in that case, I'm going to share this uh, handout with you. You should have access to that now in your uh, journal. I, I Whoa, I do. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty compass. Yeah, it's nice. It's really pretty. Okay, so a, a short rest happens, and I believe... Uh, Runar, as a fighter, I think you get some things back too, so just double check yeah. on that to make sure. Yep, I get my second win and then my, am my action surge back. Nice. All right. Um, sorry, go ahead. What would you like to do next, gentlemen? Well, I suppose we should pick a side and start looking through this boat. I think we should start. Does anyone know where a captain's quarters would be on a boat like this? Or have an idea. Uh, usually aft. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he came out of the one of these aft doors at the beginning. I say we search that area first. Yeah, he came out the back. All right, yeah. so I'm gonna do this. Hold on a second here. I'm gonna grab your tokens. Everybody, start moving their token. No, ah. don't do that. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I'm going to change things up a little bit at first here. I'm going to arm myself with the, my, the shield that I have and just my one scimitar. Okay. Sounds good. Oh, I guess these two doors down here were open too. We'll just, we'll say they weren't though. Ooh. So you're going to go in this door here first. Yeah, I will just... open that up for you. Okay. Is there one? Oh, okay. So you step into this room. Let me let me let me paint a picture for you. Uh, this seems to be one of the master cabins. The furnishings and fittings are of good quality. The place is tidy. Um, I don't know if you can see in there or not. It's pretty dark. Not really. No. Um, I'll yeah. go ahead and take out my. Uh, Do you have a torch or anything? My hooded there's lantern. A, hooded there's lantern. There's a torch on the okay. back here. Here you go. This is a hooded lantern now. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Um. The place is tidy. There's a single bunk uh, made up with a bed of linen. has its head against the bulkhead running along the center line of the ship. A polished wood table stands in the center of the room bolted to the deck. On the table is a silver bowl containing an assortment of fruit, a silver carafe half full of a light red liquid, and a silver goblet. Set at the table are two upright wooden chairs and a padded leather chair is in the corner. On the deck towards the stern is a wooden brass-bound chest Beside it is a pair of highly polished black leather boots. From the center of the ceiling, over the table, hangs an unlit hooded lantern. Oh. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to investigate those boots, and then I'm going to investigate the chest. Okay. Let's see. What does it say? Examining the boots. Um, roll, a, roll a perception check. Oh, perception. I did an investigation. That's, yeah, that's cool. Oh, it's the same yep. roll, except more. Nice. Um, as you take a look at the boots, uh, you reveal a small hidden compartment in the left, the heel of the left boot. Inside the compartment, there's a key. Ooh. Ooh. I will take the key and I will try it on the, the, the chest. But first, I'll make sure there's no traps. So I'll make sure there's no traps on it. Okay, roll another no, like, investigation uh, check for me. Can't dive poison. Again. Um, yes. Yeah, it is definitely trapped. Oh. Um. You see, like a you see, like some sort of a device that appears to have like a small vial. Oh, I see. Um. I will attempt to disarm it. Okay. Um, Go ahead and roll a dexterity check for me. Thieves, thieves tools? 
Uh, nope, just a straight dex. Oh nice. yeah, no problem. Nice. You, uh, everybody, you guys watch. Whoever's in there, uh, Runar, you're standing there, kind of behind him. You watch as Byron just kind of goes to work doing his thing, and he just very, very deftly is able to slide this mechanism out of the way, and then pull the small vial out. This, the vial itself is probably the size of maybe twice as big as like a jelly bean size or like a pill, um, and it has a strange green liquid in it. Interesting. Um, you have I'll successfully disarmed vial. the trap. Okay, yep, you can save it for sure. Um, and then I will try the key on the chest. Okay, yeah, it opens right up. You look inside and you see clothing, pretty decent looking clothing. Um, there's a leather purse that you find containing 50 gold pieces. There is a spell scroll that you find, or a scroll, let's say. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, I will. I'll pull it all out um, and just bring it to the deck and lay it out, for everyone. Okay. Um. And, you know, I'll toss the bed, too, just to be safe. Yeah, I mean, it's nice linens and stuff, but there's you don't find anything else. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. I'm good on this room. Have we gone all the way? Is that the extent of it? Just. Yeah, that's, the, that's basically the room. Byron rolled oh, the okay. investigation on that room. All right, who's doing the next room? You want to go in this plate in this room or down here? This, is this or that's is that stairway? Yeah, these right go, these are stairways that go down. Is that an open door? Yeah, those. Well, we'll say they're closed right now, actually, because okay, right. I said they were closed earlier. I prefer to search one of the rooms first. Mm -hmm. Yep, Erin just so opened the this, door to this room right here. This one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, the cabin looks clean, Erin, as you walk in. Furniture is in good repair. There's a single bunk made up, made up with a nice linen. Um, it has its head against the bulkhead, similar to the room before. Um, there's a writing desk set against the hull towards the stern. It has a drawer on each side and three trays on top. Also on the desktop, just in front of the trays, is an ink pot, two quill pens, a small knife, and a pewter container that resembles a pepper pot. Against the desk is set an upright wooden chair and beside it a wooden brass bound chest. Against the hull on the starboard side is a padded leather couch. In front of it, a bearskin rug lies on the deck while beneath the couch can be seen a large metal box. An unlit hooded lantern hangs from the ceiling. Hmm. Hey, Byron. Yes. Hey, there's some uh, stuff for you to check out. All right, your, I'll... Your, your particular set of skills. Ah, I see. Um, I'll pop over. And in. What are we? What are we looking at? Oh, well, there's. There's another chest here. There's another the chest. Oh, there's okay. a lockbox under this couch here. Okay. And um. There's a desk. You know, I'll I'll get on like um I'll lay flat like I'm prone. And I'll inspect the area of the lockbox and the chest kind of simultaneously and make sure there's no traps laying around them. Okay. Um, let's see. Roll a investigation check again. Yeah, they don't appear to be uh, trapped. Oh, these are this is gonna be easy, dude. Um, <laughs> I'll I'll try the lockbox first. The lock okay. the lockbox first. Lock box first. Wow. <laughs> there you go. Uh, let's see. Lock box. I'll check the bark bark. Yeah. Uh, just like he says, the the chest. Are you are you doing the chest or what? Or the box that's the, under the couch? The, the box under the. Oh, got sofa it. Okay. Purse. All right. So you uh, you go to open the the box, and as you open it, you're like, ah, oh, shit. Um. There's this small blade that 
swings out from the near the handle that you're using and it cuts your fingers. Ah. Uh, um, trap. Actually no, it it may not. Do a uh, roll a dexterity save for me. You may you may actually uh, be able to avoid this. Oh yeah. You you see it swinging at you and you pull your hand away as this and you and whoever's in the room sees this blade just go. Whoa. Apparently I missed that one. Is everyone okay in there? Anything Check going on? Traps. Got nothing. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay, you're fine. I knew it. I'm I believe in you. Partly blind, I guess. It sounds like um, fur from the bear. It's like a shed carpet. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have laid down. So you go ahead and open the chest? Yep, I'll open it. Not the chest, the the box. box. Yeah, sorry, the box. Yep. yep. Um, the there, box. there are ten. There are ten. I some sort of a metallic substance. They're bars of metal. Um, roll an intelligence check. And Erin, are you there? Yeah. Oh yeah, you don't. You, you know right away it's electrum. Oh. There wow. are um, ten electrum ingots in this box. Are these worth anything? Oh, mighty Smith. Probably. They have value. You know they make uh, coins out of that LCO you, from on deck. <laughs> do you want to go ahead and grab these? Um, they look kind of sure. heavy. I'm not. I'm not really sure. I will grab them. Okay. Um, and then I'll try the the chest next. Is there anything else in the box? Check it for traps. That's it. Just the ingots. Okay. Um, um, he already I did check for my traps. Investigation. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Um, the you open up the chest and um, all you find inside of it are clothing. Random articles of, of pretty nice clothing. You know, I'll pull it all out and drag it to the deck as well. Okay. Pile it up. Are you able to disable the trap on this box? Um, I was able to trigger it and <laughs> get out of its way. It counts. I mean, if I didn't have to worry about the trap, I could just carry the, these bars in the box for now. Um, no, I'm saying J Rock. Oh, touche. Um, I will attempt to disarm the. Well, the trap's already triggered. Does it need to be rearmed? That's... You would have to rearm it, yeah. To, yeah. To so I would say, I would say, leave it unarmed. And if you're ever planning it on leaving somewhere, leaving it somewhere, just realize you can rearm it when okay. you shut it. Okay. Fair enough. So now you have a trapped box to carry your, your yes, ingots in. Yes. Um, let's search that desk. Does Dave, would I be able to tell that this would be the captain's quarters? Um, it certainly looks like it's fancy enough to be the captain's quarters. That would be a, that'd be a good assumption. Both this, this room and the room that you searched previously were pretty nice. So, okay. um, At this point, it's, it'd be a safe assumption, but you don't know for sure. Well, they are all messing about in that room uh, since they brought all the tra all this everything they found out onto the deck. Theo, who's keeping an eye out there, is going to take a look through that. And specifically, I'm, I remember it was called out there was a scroll. So if Theo sees a scroll, he'll check that as well. Yeah, there's a scroll of gust of wind. Nice, fascinating. Uh, did you say you wanted to check the desk? Yeah. Or are you going to leave the desk unsearched? You could leave it unsearched if you want. No, I'd like to search it. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see here. All right, so you look at the desk. There's a couple of trays on top of the desk uh, next to the little pewter container, which seems to be full of sand, like a really fine sand. Um, Inside these trays are bills and receipts, various items of marine supply, things that they've purchased when in port to supply their crew. Um, you know, you just, you, you quickly look through them and you don't really study them per se, but you look through them 
and you get the sense that it's just kind of you know random bills and receipts. Can I tell where they came from? Um, it, you can't tell where they came from, but there are names on them. But do I recognize any of the names? I guess like um, they were kids, surely. Uh, no, you wouldn't recognize any of the names. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, so that's what's on top of the desk. There is uh, a, another tray on top of the desk that contains several letters. Uh, as you look at the letters, you get the sense that these are rather personal and intimate in nature. Upon, upon, upon further inspection, it appears as though there are three different letters to three different, different women in three different ports. <laughs> Each of them under the assumption that she is the Mrs. Sigurd Snake Eyes. Oh, that that does my heart good. Um, they're, they're, they're not well-written letters, and they're I mean they're written by someone who's semi-literate at best. Um, right, right. But they're all signed uh, nice. Sigurd Snake Eyes, and then right next to the signature, a crude signature. I mean, it's hard to to make out, but there's a pictograph. Uh, like a like a doodle of a lizard with a forked tongue. Okay. Um. There are also a couple of desk drawers. I'd like to check the drawers. They appear to be locked. Ah, uh, I got you. Yeah. Can we I will move over to the drawers. Mm -hmm. And I will check to make sure there aren't any traps. All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and roll an investigation check. Mm. They do not appear to be trapped. Okay. Um, I will attempt to unlock them with my thieves tools. All right. Go ahead. Thieves tools roll dexterity. Nice. Yeah, you're able to... They just pop right open. Piece of cake. Yep. Um, let's see. The first drawer contains another po another potion of healing, lesser healing. Oh, thank you. Nice. Uh, the second drawer contains a couple of different maps. Um, as you pull the maps out, uh, you notice that some of them are are look to be coastline in the salt marsh area. In fact, one of them has salt marsh indicated on it. Uh, the others, you're not, you're not too familiar with where they, where they are. They're, they're not like grand scale maps. They're pretty fine, uh, almost uh, like bathymetry maps where you can see the sort of the depth of the reefs and things like that. And that's, that's all you find in the, uh, in the desk. Theo would appreciate those, if nothing else. Dave, just remembering that last pirate ship I was on, I'd like to investigate underneath the desk to see if there's anything, like, hidden in the floor or anything like that. All right, so you're going to kind of look for a secret, like a secret compartment or anything like that? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'd like to look under those rugs and stuff, too. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead. Keep the real captain. <laughs> Don't tell, secret captain. <laughs> yeah. You can only pull that move once. Is that perception? Sure. Uh, that'd be an investigation check. Well, you don't you don't find any secret compartments under the desk. All you find is like some dust and uh, a couple of spiders. It looks like scurry away, small spiders, not not uh, not giant spiders. Um, and then, but as you as you move the bearskin rug out of the way, you do find a hatch in the floor that appears to open into whatever area is below. And that's pretty much the extent of that room. All right, do we open the hatch or do we go downstairs first? Um, you know, if someone is waiting for us below, they will not expect the hatch. 
That's true. Do we search the front rooms before we try to go down below deck? Ooh. Well, we have them all barricaded. Like, that's true. I think we could get away with it. Um, just know <laughs> that we wouldn't be able to go up on that side. Do we know for certain that all of the doors on the other side of the ship, of, of the deck, are um, uh, stairs down and not rooms? Because there's three doors over there. Yeah, I feel we... like we should clear all the rooms first on the top floor. Okay. Just say that. Okay, yeah. I'm down. Let's do it. Um... All right, so you head back to the bow of the ship, and you're going to go You're gonna go left or right first. You want to go through this door or this door? We go to port. Okay. So you open up the door on the left side, the port side. Mm -hmm. And you head inside. You poke your head in here in. And you see a crude metal stove, not lit, leaning against the hull on the left there. Uh, it has an adjustable metal chimney that can be placed through the vent hole when it's opened. Next to this stove is an open metal bin containing sticks of kindling. Uh, beside this large a wooden table, bolted firmly to the deck with a thick top crisscrossed with score marks as if people were eating there, maybe cutting food. The table has a large drawer. Hanging from hooks set into the hull above the table are two iron frying pans, two saucepans, and a skillet. All of them look well used. Set against the bulkhead opposite the large is a large cask filled with clear liquid. Besides this stands a wooden cupboard. Against the bulkhead beside this forward door is a wooden upright chair and hanging from the center of the deck above is an unlit hooded lantern. It's a small room, but there's a lot in it. Seems to be the ship's galley. Yeah, I'm uh, not gonna open the cupboards as they probably <laughs> contain giant centipedes. Yeah, you've learned your lesson. Please, we're at sea. We'll probably just form a anything to do with that. <laughs> Piranhas. Quippers. Any seagull though? Oh, there? not clippers. Nope, no I, seagull loaf. I didn't see any seagull loaf. You want to keep right. moving, or do you want to? We're not excited about the galley. Okay. Um, no, not really. I'll light the the lantern though, just to give the room some more light. All right. Oh, that triggers the trap. Oh the man. Trap is, trap Theo's cooking. All right, so the the light is lit. Uh, where would you like to go next? There's a door right here. Oops, let me see. I can't see that. There's a door right here. No. Yeah. That Let's goes that even out. farther forward, and there's a door right here. Oh, in in the from the galley. Correct. Oh, yeah, we should there's check that. There's a door right here. Yeah, let's let's check it. Okay. Is it locked? I'll let you guys go first. No, it's not locked. Okay. Aaron, you're gonna you're gonna go in first. I guess. What's the marching order here? <laughs> Runa, you're I'll... going first. <laughs> I'll, go first. <laughs> I'll go right behind him. <laughs> All right, Runa, you open the door. You look inside. From the iron sausages? hooks set into the ceiling hang three long strings of sausages, a large ham, and a hunk of meat. Mm. Against the hull are three <laughs> sacks. Set against the bulkhead beside the door are a cask and a ceramic jar. Against the other bulkhead are a set of large and small casks and another ceramic jar. There's an opening in the latter bulkhead, about three feet square, and with its lower edge about three feet above the deck. And it's open. Up here, where yep. I am? Yep, and you can see into the other room. Tell yeah, me there's about a bunch these of meat. <laughs> <laughs> Are they, do they appear to be smoked and cooked or smoked, cured? Um, do you have they, proficiency they, with cook's tools, cook's utensils? Nope. Um, roll an investig or uh, yeah, roll an investigation check. Sixteen. That's good. Yeah, that's pretty good. You uh, they they look to be delicious if not poorly stuffed you know i mean they're not even like they're not usually if you go to a butcher right you, you buy yep. sausages and they're all about the same length and size these are not uh potentially homemade yep 
Renard, are you but peeking are they, into that? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Are they cooked? Uh, no, they are not cooked. They're raw. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's a cured ham? Mm-hmm. Actually, they probably would be, they'd probably be, like, smoked. Okay. To preserve them. Yeah. I'll cut one off. All right. And eat it. And uh, roll a constitution save. Just kidding. This is it poison? <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it tastes delicious, man. It's uh, it's good. It's it's well spiced. If you know, even though it's kind of crude looking, they're they're yeah. well made. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna take the whole string. I'm gonna write it down in my inventory. Okay, string of one string, or there's three of them. I'll take one. I'm not gonna be greedy. <clears throat> okay, so you have one string of sausages. Um, all right, so uh, Runar, you're kind of poking your head into the next room. Yeah. Uh, or does anybody else want to investigate any of the crates and sacks in the in the room that Urin's in? I guess I'll just tell you what's in them. There's meat and salt, uh, or excuse me, the meat is salted beef. Uh, the sacks contain dried beans. The casks contain flour, salt, and one of them contains ale. Uh, the jars contain honey and olive oil. This is obviously the galley stores. Um, it looks as though it's relatively fresh as if they just recently supplied. Hmm. Runar, you, you can go ahead and move into that room there. You see two coiled lengths of rope and three rolls of sailcloth that lie against the deck alongside a large box. A large wooden cast stands next to six lengths of wood planking. Set into the wooden rack fastening to the bulkhead by the door are two metal-headed hammers, two wooden mallets, two saws, and an adze. There's an opening about three... Oh, you just walked through the opening in the bulkhead. This, uh, this appears to be the ship store, so uh, Byron would recognize this as sort of where the boatswain uh, would be working to get things ready for repairs, to the sail, to the hull, etc. Taking a look at the rope, it's about 100 feet long. It looks like real sturdy hemp and rope. Um, one of the boxes contains a, a ton of copper nails. Yeah, it looks like rope for rigging. A um, lot of nails. Um, there is a cast that's three quarters full of a hard, dry tar. So essentially, this is sort of like the carpenter's room. Iron immediately starts having flashbacks <laughs> and throwing up. Oh, no, no, I'm kidding. And there is a door right here. At the yeah, south end of this room. That probably leads back to the front deck. Yeah, and Theo, there's a door right here that you're looking at. Erin, you uh, open the door and head in? Door. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right, so this room has a weird odor to it, kind of <laughs> of, of swamp. Um, in the center of the area, there's a wooden table bolted to the deck. There's a silver jug that's half full of a red liquid, and there is a pewter mug uh, anybody who was there when it happened would remember that this is where the Dragonborn emerged from. Um, let's see, there's a hooded, unlit hooded lantern hanging from the ceiling. A couple of wooden chairs around this table. Looks like maybe sort of a break room type of area. Hmm. Sniff the liquid. Uh, the liquid is wine. Culture Dragonborn. Yep, and that's uh, that's the end of that room there. Ooh. Do you uh, do you mind if we take like uh, five minutes before we go below decks? Sure. Yeah, we Here can we take go. a early break. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Eight oh five. We'll get back to it. Right. Okay. Then. Perfect. All right, so Byron, you wanted to go take another look at the one of the rooms, is that correct? Yeah, I'm just going to pop in, you know, lift up the rug, look for any hidden compartments. I kind of got inspired when you found that one underneath the bear. Oh, on the other side there? Yep. Yeah, um, roll an investigation check. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> well, you you know you, you do a decent job of searching, and you you're like, oh yeah, here we go, and you get to the rug, the green rug, and you're like, all right, here it is, and you pull it back, expecting there to be a secret compartment, and there isn't. Well, but the the suspense was worth it. Yep. It was, you know. <laughs> my heart is literally. You have a showman's now. timing, my friend. All Not right, guys. Same. What would you like to do next? Sometimes a rug is just a rug. <laughs> so you've got two doors here that you haven't opened yet. Boom, boom. Oops. Not on the right layer. Here we go. Boom, kaboom. And then you've got this door here that is currently barricaded by the boat or by the uh, planks from the boat. That are nailed oh, into the a, door jam. There was another room right down here by where I am. Yeah, there's two doors. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, we should check, check them. Yep. Yeah. Let's just open the doors and look in and see. Yeah. Sure. See if there's no. anything. I'm gonna open this one right. Okay, first. you open that one, okay. and Byron opens the other one. You see stairs that lead down into darkness. All right, this is another staircase, guys. Yep. On that side too. Uh, right here, where, where I am. Oh, wow. Hmm. Two stairs next to each other. Wait, that's a staircase too? Yeah. Seems like a poor use of space to me. <laughs> are they separate staircases? They are. They're separated we by a wall. this boat anyway? Good God. Do, do, do they look like they're going to different... Levels? I designed this boat... No, I didn't design it. <laughs> <laughs> I did create this boat in Incarnate, though. But this boat is, nice. uh, this is the Sea Ghost, man. This is part of the module. You know, he's a pirate. You probably got it on discount. After yeah. got right. his war he had money. an overzealous boatswain who just liked to build <laughs> stairs. He loved stairs. Anyways, you see two, two independent stairwells that lead down into darkness. Dave, are they separated by a wall? Or they are, they yeah. Oh. Yep, there's a wall that separates the two. So they could conceivably go into two different rooms. Possibly. It's do, hard they, to tell. do they look like they're going to different depths? Uh, nope. Top? It appears as though they lead to the same next level down. Okay. All right. Well, it looks like we're um, we've searched all the rooms up top here. Yep. We just need to decide which. How do we want to go down? I think this is the best bet for going down because it allows us to have two people side by side. Well, they're, they're not, they're not, they're separated, they're not, the they're same, not together. Yeah. Right, right, but they're, I mean, if they go to the same depth like we believe they do. We'll be in two separate rooms. Yes, I have been on I mean, several that's... boats where, you know, the stairwells are next to each other, go to separate compartments. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I suppose. <sighs> Listen to Runar. It's possible. You guys want to, you guys want to split up? No. <laughs> a terrible fucking idea. <laughs> it's always a good idea. Uh, lead the way then, because <laughs> uh, I have a lot of bad ideas. All right, who is who's gonna lead the way, and which stairs are you taking? Uh, okay, let's. Or we could try the hatch under the captain's quarters. Ooh, I like that idea better. Should we go investigate it? Yep, okay, let's take the that. hatch. Hatch is serious. I like it. Might surprise people. All right, so you go back into the, the captain's quarters to the hatch. And you take a look at it. It's, it looks like it just drops down into a dark room below. So you could open the hatch, and you'd have to kind of jump down. Um, can I peer down there with the torch just to see if I see any eyes? Absolutely. Any? Yeah. Right. You can kind of hover over the top, kind of hang, hang over it a little bit with the torch. Uh, yeah. And you can see what appears to be... Another set of living quarters. You can just make out uh, from the flicker of the torch a bed and a table. And a coffin and a Zolek. <laughs> yep. Nope, burn it down. I didn't think I would find you guys here on this boat. What a coincidence. Um, I'm going to actually run up real quick and just grab the grappling hook that we used to get up on the boat. All right. And I'm going to run back down. And I'm going to attach it to something sturdy. Yep. Well, the yep. desk, for example, is is fastened to the oh, yeah. to the deck. So you can yep, use that. So, so yeah, I'll attach it to the desk, and I'll okay. throw the rope down the hole. 
All right. Easy enough. You've so accomplished that. The captain that. had three wives, and also apparently a lover in the compartment below him. <laughs> <laughs> Escape hatch. All right, you've got a rope sure. dangling down into the dark room below. What are you going to do? Shall we go down? After you. Who's okay. going to go first? Uh, I'll go down first. All right. I'm going to move you out of the way for a minute, Byron. Actually, um, can I do one thing before I do that? Yep. I'm going to do my... Um, I'm going to use my axe, my second win now. Give me one D10 plus my fighter level of health. Okay. And hit points back. Sure. Oh, <sighs> bummer. The perfect amount of hit points. Back. Can't, can't win with these. It's better guys. than none. It's better than none. All right. Precisely. All right. So you drop down into the room, correct? Yep. Uh, okay. Shield and scimitar. Yep. Well, you're gonna. So, do you want to take a torch with you, or do you want to jump down into the darkness? I'm going to take the torch, actually. Torch so then you're going to have to stow the shield or the scimitar. I'm going to stow the, the sword. Okay, so you've got a shield and a torch. Yep. Got it. All right, you drop down into the area. Roll a, roll a, roll a stealth check for me. Okay. Or actually, no, an acrobatics check. Because you didn't indicate any sort of stealthiness. Okay. Yeah, you uh, you're easily you're you're an acrobatic kind of guy. You're physically fit. You you easily drop down, land with your feet on the floor, kind of look around in the darkness as you illuminate it with your torch, and you don't see anybody. All right. So I'm just gonna quietly kind of move over so other people can come down. Is anybody else gonna join him? Why would we do that? It's dark. I will. I have the torch, so Byron, I'm just going to motion uh, you're for gonna, someone else. You're going to drop down? Yep. Yep. Okay, roll an acrobatics check for me. You're going to have to move over there, <laughs> Runar. Um, you kind of land with a thud. <laughs> and then you move out of the way. And Erin, go ahead and roll an acrobatics check for me. Actually, you don't need to. You, you drop okay. down, no problem. And then you move out of the way. Theo, are you coming down? Uh, Theo will go down. Can he use the rope to help? Uh, you can roll an acrobatics check. Oh, yeah, no nice. problem. You you kind of slide down and almost like it's a, a fireman's pole and land on your feet, ready for action. Um, uh, I'm a you all find yourselves in a cabin. Along the bulkhead, leading up in the direction of the bow is an enclosed uh, companionway. That, those are the stairs. At its foot of the door, there is a central bulkhead with a door that leads to pr presumably the other side of the ship. So there's a door right here. Um, there's a single bunk. Nice, nice linens on the bed. They're kind of heaped in a pile. At the foot is a brass-bound wooden chest closed. Under the bunk is a brass box closed. In the center of the cabin, a plain wooden table bolted to the deck. On it, you see two books, one open and propped up against the other. Besides the table is a wooden chair hanging from the ceiling over the table is an unlit hooded lantern. Uh, I'll take a look at the books. Sweet. While you're doing that, I will check the, the boxes for traps. Uh, Theo, as you look at the books, you see uh, you easily see the uh, titles. One of them, The Principles of Navigation by Decorma. That's the open book. Ooh, oh, nice. The second one is Legal Distinctions in Letters of Marquis by someone named, an author named Tazar. That's the one that's closed. How many R's are there? Well, there's two A's and one R, so it's really Tazar. <laughs> What was that second title again? Legal Distinctions in Letters of Marquis. Some highfalutin stuff. Yeah, is that like Letters of Passage or something? You're not sure. Letters of Marquis. And the other was a navigation book? Mm-hmm. Yep, Theo Sounds is promptly going, I would like to hold on to these, thank you. Sounds useful. 
Okay. What was everybody else doing? I'm just weeding the C Byron's results with the boxes here. Is oh. there a you said is there a door by where I'm standing? Yes, there's a door here and a, and door, a door here. Down at the bottom. Okay. Yeah. I'm a, I will uh, listen at this door by where I'm standing. Okay, Erin, roll a perception check. And Byron, what were you investigating? Uh, I'm going to investigate both of the closed um, boxes for any traps. Okay, roll an investigation check. That was persuasion. <laughs> that was the wrong thing. Uh, let's see. You do not detect traps on the sea trap on the sea chest were you doing both of them with that roll i can't remember what you um, said i was planning on doing yeah both so of them. neither of them appear to be appear to be trapped i'm gonna open them okay uh the sea chest isn't locked so it opens right up there are a bunch of garments in it and a pair of boots and um in general the apparel is old but reasonably clean Okay. And the box, uh, as you try to open the box, it appears to be locked. I'm going to take out my tools and just pop it open real quick. Okay, go ahead and thieves tools with dexterity for me. Oh yeah, no problem. You pop that sucker open and you look inside and lo and behold, there is 500 silver pieces. Oh yeah. And this is the brass color box? Uh, that was the brass box that was under the bed, correct? Okay. Yep. Uh, Erin, let's see, what did you end up rolling with perception of 14? Uh, 14. You, you hear whispers. I think, I think. You can't make out what they, what they say, but you hear am whispers. I, am I able to tell a, well, am I able to tell language at all? Nope, you can't, you couldn't hear what they said. All you could hear was that there was... A whispered voice okay. near the door. I will uh, come over. There's uh, someone on the other side of this door. Byron's going to perk up, go flat, hold up a fist, point at his eyes, <laughs> do a spinning motion with his finger and point his full flat hand at the door, and then he's going to sneak over to the door after pulling his hood up. <laughs> what does that mean? Awesome. I think he said he means watch me rally on the door. <laughs> I don't know. Is, it, is the door locked? Can we tell by without jiggling on it? Uh, you could roll an investigation check to take a look at it. I guess by it's, it's going to be hard. To, it's going to be hard to do, though. I'm just going to try and stealthily open it. Oh, okay. Great. Roll a, uh, roll, sure, roll a stealth check. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, did you just roll a natural one? <laughs> no. Plus ten. Yes. Plus ten. All right. As the door opens, you just hear this. <laughs> <laughs> Just the squeakiest hinge that you've ever heard. I'm gonna pull it shut again. Before before it opens <laughs> the, sure the whole way. So before it even opens all the way, you're you're able to close it shut, and you just hear. Do you see anybody? Uh, I heard somebody. Yeah, we all heard that. And uh, then you hear you hear a bunch of like. Like multiple boots? Like yeah. Multiple footsteps? Sounds uh, like it. Oh, shit. We, okay, we need to go after them now because they are running. Byron, hold the door. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get up against the door and try and barricade it with my body. No, I meant... But, uh, oh. Sorry, oh. sorry. Too literal. Open the door. We have to chase after them now. Oh, okay. I'm going to kick the door down. All right, roll kick, an athletics check. Down. I'm gonna. No, I can't kick the door down. I'm not strong enough. I already Just know that. Open uh, the door. I'll open the door again. All right. This time with no stealth, correct? Yeah, just opening it. And it opens up, and you look inside to what appears to be the cargo hold. 
Let me, let me read this for you. Lantern light fills the space. Through the center runs the main mass. Besides it, a couple of different openings to different areas in the, in the lower decks of the ship. Um, ropes, casks, uh, bundles of, of uh, silk, all kinds of stuff. Not to mention the fact that there's a bunch of dudes. Let's roll initiative. Just a bunch of dudes. Bunch of dudes. Come on, initiative. That was not impressive at all. Man, my initiative rolls. Neither just was mine. It's okay. Have been sucking. Did you roll a one? No, I rolled a four. Okay. Well, I rolled a one. We've all been caught flat-footed by these dudes. Just a bunch of dudes. Who would have known? It's probably best to stay in this room. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of dudes in this room. Choke point. Fighting against a bunch of dudes in this other room. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Wow. There's a lot of dudes. <laughs> 11, 11, 12, 17. Good lord, how 13. many? That's a lot of dudes. It is. Erin's at the bottom of the initiative? What? <laughs> oh, God. The one. What happened to the monk? I mean, you'll, if you remember, like, my initiative rolls for, like, the last, like, four fights have been absolute dog shit. Yeah. Uh,. Let's see. The dice gods are upset that I'm not rolling real dice. So this guy here is at the head of the initiative, and he is going to push past his friend and try to move towards the door. Away from us? Yep. He's going the opposite direction. Uh, this guy here is going to follow him. And you can you can just barely make out. Uh, well, no, you probably can't. Byron. Did we scare him? Well, you you guys probably didn't like where you are. You're gonna be hard to see what it just happened yeah. in there. No, so, I know, I know. Yeah. The only person that could potentially have seen that is Byron rolling a uh, perception check, maybe, to see if you notice that. Otherwise, go ahead and take your action as normal. You know, um, I'm gonna just. Take a step and step and walk in and be like, where do you guys think you're going? It's us. We're 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 here. We just dropped a bunch of loot off uh for from land. Um we just came down the uh snake eyes told us to come check on you guys, see how you're doing. <laughs> roll Why a not? roll a deception a long check. Time, yeah. Yep, roll a deception check. Why not? The guy in front of you is like, what? what? It sounded like you killed everybody. He looks super confused. Uh, that's now, if we did that, you wouldn't want to fight us. So, yeah, that was your action. Okay. Um, and I'll and I'll and I'll actually move. Can I continue my movement? And yeah, move, you uh, did ten feet. So, uh, this would would this be over these bundles? Yeah, you'd have to climb up over those uh, bundles of silks. Which okay, is little, I'll, I'll just climb weird. up. I'll cl well, no, can I sneak behind these to get up, like, over here? Sure, yeah. Like, you against that. the wall? I'll yeah. go flat against the wall, and I'll walk to here. Okay. I'll be like... And he does yeah, not take it. an attack of opportunity on you. Okay, he, very He's good. just so confused right now. All right, that's your turn. Brings us to this guy. Um... He's just going to take one step back and kind of bump into his friend. <laughs> um, that brings us to this individual here who says, Please, uh, there's been a mistake. We, uh, we don't intend to fight you. Uh, that's his turn. This guy here takes a couple steps back. Runar, your turn.
Runar? Yeah, sorry. Um, I'm going to move in to the um, sword drawn to see what's going on. Okay. You see basically all dudes are kind of backed up against the, the bulkhead at the front of this room. And as you move past that guy, he's, he's so confused, he doesn't take an attack of opportunity on you. Do you want to do anything else besides move? Um, I'm just going to say, <clears throat> we don't need to fight. Lay down whatever arms you have. Okay. And I'm going to leave it at that. Roll a persuasion check or intimidation, depending on how you did it whatever flavor you used, if it was intimidating or if it was more of like a, a persuasive argument. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go intimidation, but it doesn't matter either way. So. Just for flavor. Kind of, it's a different approach, uh, Actually, right? I'm going to do a persuasion, yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. That's more thank diplomatic. You. Yeah. Sorry, than, was, than when you said intimidation, I was like, <clears throat> oh, no. Yeah, intimidation is like an aggressive negotiation right. versus like a... <laughs> You see, you see really a couple. Of, after you say that, you see a couple of the guys kind of look at each other, like, "What should we do?" Uh, that's the end of your turn. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this guy here. Now we have to fight everybody. At the We're front of the room is just like, "What do you intend to do with us?" And he takes a couple steps back. Which brings us to Theo. Theo is going to walk into the hold and just clear the door uh, with sword drawn, uh, shield up. Um, and then as his action, he's going to mutter a few arcane words. A light's going to flare on the sword. And his body's going to be covered in that frosty, icy armor he's fond of. And he just looks around and goes, we would like you all to um, abandon ship, really. Um, we really don't want to fight you if we don't have to. And that's the end of my turn. You, as you say that, you hear a couple of the guys start kind of grunt. Hey, I think they're going to let us go. They seem a little confused, but... Uh, this guy over here moves over and says, uh, Look, we... Uh, put, your, put your swords away, fellas. And the guys kind of look at him. He says, We, uh, we can be uh, reasonable men. We have no beef with you. Obviously, you have a superior force here. Uh, sheath your weapons and let's talk about this. That's his action. Erin? Finally get to Erin at the, bo the yeah, no lonely kidding. bottom of the order. I feel like I need to keep up with the hype squad thing, so... Uh, a couple of, couple of cartwheels into the room. I, yeah, so I'm going to dive over the top of Theo. Like, jump dive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, do you guys, did you guys watch the WWE in, like, the <laughs> late 90s? Of course. Early 2000s? A little. So, you yeah. know, the, like, the Shawn Michaels? Oh, yeah. Like, when he would, like, flex, like, a side lunge into the flex? <laughs> So I do that, I, I do right. that, and I look at all of them and I say, this is fucking Runar Dag. Of course we're going to let you live. Because that's what he said. <laughs> we got to be like in a special high school. All right, so is that a persuasion check? Yep, yeah. let's, let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. Oh, I'm actually proficient in persuasion. Wow. There you go. Hey, that'll work. That's not yeah. bad at all. <laughs> you just, uh, you basically, at this point, as we get through the first round and there's been no no aggressive, I mean, no overtly aggressive attacks or anything like that, just some intimidation and a little bit of persuasion. None of you get the sense at this point that these guys are want to fight you. Uh, so unless one of you wants to attack them, we're going to drop out of initiative. No, Theo does not to plan to attack. Neither do I. Byron? 
You're, oh, you're kind of the only oh, one that's oh. in question. <laughs> Ryder's like, you know, the perfect time to attack somebody is when they're not an initiative. Right? <laughs> well, I mean, they're still I an mean, initiative. That does but... guarantee my uh, sneak attack damage. <laughs> we need I'm a not crew. We them. need a crew. Yeah, that's, that's right, what I was right. thinking too. I was thinking the exact same thing. All like, right. These people obviously seem submissive. Let's persuade them to be our crew. All right. To work for so us. We'll, we will go ahead and drop out of initiative. Um, at that point, this uh, individual steps up and says, "My name is Fritz. Uh, yeah, we are. We don't intend to to fight you. Uh, you have overpowered the ship. What What do you mean to do with us?" Listen, I I think I think we you know obviously I'm going to step up to him. I think we kind of you know came off pretty aggressive there for a minute. Yeah. And I just want to apologize for that. You know, it, 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 apology accepted. Yeah. Um, we definitely killed all of the crew up top. That's what we uh, we heard. We could hear it from down here. Yes, the captain's dead. We killed that oh. that dragon thing. Um, oh, Arjun, he was a good man. Yeah. Well. Who was, are you guys? Um. Uh, well, uh, we're, we're the, the, the Deg gang. Um, oh we, shit. We have a... Runar Degs guys. Uh, well, just listen. Oh, here's fuck. The, you here's you, the you see the other guys t start to kind of move back a little bit more. They're, they're getting... Whoa, 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 whoa. You don't need to be afraid. Listen, we've been having a, kind of a rough time. You know, every time we get into a situation like this, we just end up killing everyone. Yeah, we've heard. It's really, uh, you know, it's. It's getting old, man. You know, it's really getting old for us. We well, we really don't want to die. So we could really use more friends. This seems like a fortuitous encounter for us. Uh, we yeah. don't intend to uh, to to uh, commit suicide on your swords. Ah, uh, very good. Um, well, you see, we have this whole ship now that we can't pilot by ourselves. Ah, well, we are uh, we are adept at uh, working the craft, so to speak. That's that's why we were down here and not. Posted as guards up up top, we leave that to the warriors. But uh, you know we can still fight. We just don't need to. Uh, especially, oh shit, is that Runar Deg right there? It yeah, sure yeah. Is. Why don't Why don't we We just? I'm just gonna. You know. Uh, you just see beads of sweat. Beads of sweat start to roll down this guy's forehead. I, Deg, these people are afraid of you. You need to really. You need to set them straight. I'm gonna sheath my sword. You you see you, you almost like hear an audible like sigh of relief as you do that. Look, I'm gonna look long and hard at this guy and say, "How long have you been on this boat?" Oh yeah, it's been some time. So we've been working for uh, Snake Eyes now for gosh, uh, boy. Uh, what do you think? Uh, well, shit, probably six months, close to a year. I've been here. What about you? Yeah, one of the other guys looks up and says. I don't know. I've been here for maybe a year, year and a half. It's been a been a good crew. Pays well. You all from different ports? Where are you from? Oh shit, we're from all over the place, man. All over and nowhere, if you know what I mean. How much were, was Snake Eyes paying you? Well, you know, the going rate is different per per man. Depends on what you do. We don't like to talk about what our wages are. It starts to build a little bit of animosity amongst the crew, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. That's how I they mean, keep you down. It's uh, human resources yeah, right. 101. You have, to, you have to all, you know, communicate effectively so that you all know, oh, God, my accent went Norwegian. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, it, it happens. <laughs> That's terrible. In the background of this, Theo is now just leaning on a cask covered in that, like, ice armor that's now just freezing kind of melting on. <laughs> oh wait, no it's it's magical for the next hour oh so nice. he's just radiating cold and leaning on something i'm just gonna be pacing just being like well tell you what fellas <laughs> we have money now <laughs> yeah you looking for a crew up. if you want to keep earning and keep working you can stay on the boat with us Otherwise, it's going to be a long swim. Oh well, we uh, we prefer to to have a wage. What do you say? Yeah, we pr we appreciate uh, you know a steady wage for sure. That's fair. I understand that. That's what I'm offering. No well, more pirating, though. Yeah, the nature of our you know outings might change a little bit. But wait a minute, you don't intend to do any pirating? Yeah, 
How do you intend yeah. to, you have to a pay for it? Like well, how do you intend to pay for for all you know the ship and I mean, even the even the lowest guy on the totem poles gets five gold you know a day. Five gold a day. A day. Yeah, plus ha you know plus a share of whatever the prize is that we take. I'm I mean, what do you why I've do you think people, guy guy why do you think people pirate? There's, all right, there's I'm gonna, money yeah, in um, it. I'm we need to find out if he's lying. We need to discuss this. Mio just goes, yeah, they, um, <laughs> no, that there's no one being paid five gold a day to be a pirate unless they are, um, making some very serious killings, in which case there should be much, much more gold somewhere in this hole than what we have found already. Um, so someone should point us in that direction. Uh, well, I mean... Also, and I, I mean, I hate to be the one to point this out, uh, but you know, um, eventually we're going to go back to uh, Salt Marsh, and um, do you know what they do to pirates there, yes? Well, I mean, we were, we were held here, you know, against our will, of course, to, uh, to make the craft move. Snake Eyes, you know, I mean, he threatened our families. Oh, so now you're being threatened of course, no, paid no. five gold. Come on, that's a very good, that's a very good story. We can work with that it's story. It's the best story I can figure out. Yeah? You're just going to have to realize. Spur of the moment. We'll need a story. Or or we picked you up at a different port and you were never pirates. Yeah. Either way, I like that the one. pirating part is done. And if it comes up, you know, it's bad for you and everyone else. Hey, so, guys. He, this guy kind of steps forward. He seems to be the sort of the leader of the group. Uh, and he walks over and he's like, uh, fellas, so, uh, no more pirating, huh? What do you think about that? Uh, and all the guys are like, yeah, yeah, no, that's yeah, good. Uh, no more. We're done with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no way. <laughs> We're done. All right. So they all seem to be in agreement at this point. And, and this guy here says, uh, he, he, he walks up to you, uh, Runar, pretty meek. At this point, he's still pretty intimidated by it, and he reaches out his hand and says, My name's Fritz, yeah, and uh, I, I'm sort of the foreman of this crew here. I'd be happy to work for you, and if you want to discuss terms, uh, it might be better if we, maybe we have a conversation in private about terms. Certainly. Okay, great. All right. Well, uh, in Fritz. the meantime, My name is Runar. yeah, nice to meet you. I know who, <laughs> I know who you are. We all do. Um, okay, then. Uh, let's go have a conversation then. Let's, uh, we'll, we'll settle a deal and then, uh, what, whatever you say, captain, uh, you know, yeah, there we go. All right. Everybody up top. All of you, all of them up top. Everybody's all going up top. Or, um, we gotta make them go see. up there. Should we search these bottom rooms before we make them all go upstairs or? I think if we get them all into that like pantry room with all the sausages and stuff, we can lock them in there, no problem. Or we could just lock them in this back bedroom where they're all are they're all down here anyway. Well, I mean, you don't need to lock us edge. up. I mean, we uh, we already agreed that we were gonna work for you, right? I mean, that seems like you know an, uh, a violation of work standards or something if all you right. lock us all in right. a room. Like we, you know, we got a union. Are you guys unionizing already? Are, yeah, I mean, Should we have. We <laughs> hey, you got to work with the crew. Um, yeah, look, all right, man. So how about you fellas just come down here by the kegs, and me and Fritz here will. Yeah, look around if you need to. I mean, you know, there's there's some good stuff here. Else? Is there anybody else in these other rooms? Nobody uh, that we're aware of. All guys, right. you know any? No, no, nope, just us. You killed everyone else. And are these your quarters down here? Well, you know, up in the in the aft there, there's a bunch of hammocks. We stay in there. Go check it out. I mean, it stinks and it's dirty, but that's where we uh, that's that's where we live and eat. We don't want to claim your stuff, so I'm just making sure. Yeah, no, that's fine, and we appreciate that. We got some personal effects and whatnot up there, but uh, we will search it though. Oh shit! Okay, well, have at it. <laughs> they 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 make way for you guys to uh, to get in there. Are there two doors up front? Is it kind of the same layout? No, nope, just one door. Okay. Um, I'll, uh, should I'll be stay open. back here just in case. Should be open, right. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I'll stay back here as well. Um, Is this a staircase, Dave? Um, hold on a sec. I think that's the one going up top. Yeah. Get a good about that. Okay. 
So yeah, um, yeah. Go there's ahead, a staircase right here that goes back up, and you can see at the top of the stairs, there's a sh there's a bunch of planks that have been nailed to the door frame by you. Perfect. Uh, okay, so you move into that front room and you're gonna search it. Uh, go ahead and roll an investigation check for me, Runar. Um, I can't find my torch. I had a torch somewhere. Oh, uh, there's a torch right here. Okay. Um, no, this guy. I'm with Runar. This isn't somebody new, right? No. Nope. These guys. Okay. Well, I mean, they were in this room, but uh, you saw them move into that room. So no, there's no new guys. As you move in, um, let's see. Unpleasant odor. It stinks like eo feces. Uh, you know, just dudes. Um, it, this is the crew quarters, and it fills the entire forward part of the deck. There is a staircase that leads up, which I mentioned already, uh, that is blockaded by uh, Byron's fancy carpentry work. Around the perimeter of, the, of this particular cabin, slung between hooks in the bulkhead and supporting poles, are eight hammocks. Judging from the way in which they hang, the hammocks seem to be unoccupied at present. Well, yeah, there's nobody in them. Uh, beneath each hammock is a brass-bound wooden sea chest. Most of them are closed. Two of them have open lids and appear to uh, contain clothing. In the center of the cabin stands a long wooden table with a bench along each of its longer sides. Um, everything is bolted to the deck in an attempt to keep everything in place. The table is stained and cluttered and untidy, piled with dirty tin plates, cups, roughly stacked in a large tin bucket below it. Over the table, hanging from the ceiling, is an unlit wood, a hooded lantern. Against the starboard side, an area has been curtained off by a cheap, dirty cloth hanging. That's right here. I take it that's the, the commode, the head? Yeah, just one quick little sniff over there, and you can smell, you know, poop. Oof. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to walk around, not like overly intrusive, but I'm just going to make sure there's no like large caches of weapons or. Uh, on the table, you see a deck of greasy playing cards. Uh, there's a set of dice on the table. There's also a book on the table with the title Gro Grog Hovels. <laughs> Grog Hovels? Yeah. Yep. Is that like bars in the area or something? <laughs> yeah. You pick it up and look at it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna check yeah. This basically, out. It, it, it's got a list uh, and a, dis a very, very uh, almost broken English written description of the taverns and inns along the coastline between, so it's you know. like the pirate version of the Michelin system? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to see if the empty net's listed on there. All right, uh, roll an investigation check. All right. Nice. Yeah, you, you're able to navigate this book pretty quickly and find the, the salt marsh entry, and a absolutely the empty net is listed. And a couple of details about it. Uh, lodging available. Good prices, run by a son of a bitch named Crab, and uh, overlooks the river. Good place to get into trouble. That's right. it. Okay. I'm just going to snap it shut and throw it back down on the table where I found it. Okay. <laughs> I'm pretty convinced this is just like straight up dude hobble. Yep, it, it stinks like dude in there. <laughs> It stinks, like yep. dude. Um, Theo oh, and Byron, are you guys anything going on in them, the? Oh, go how ahead. How many of them are there all together? One, two, three, four, five, six. So, am I to presume the other two are the other thugs we killed upstairs? Because there was eight two, cots. Three, four, five, I see seven. Six. Yeah, there's six guys. Okay. And did we kill the other two crew members upstairs? Presumably. Okay. All right. And then um, I'd like to search the back room too, back where Byron is, that other yep. side. Okay. 
Um, let's see, you're in the cargo hold. Um, let's see. Against the aft bulkhead are stacked bolts of cloth lashed by ropes to brackets bolted in the deck so they are secure. On each side against the hull are stacked large, a large number of small casks also secured by ropes on the de deck. You can also see there's a wooden hatch above you that leads up to the deck, the ma or the main deck. And below you, there's a hatch that leads to uh, what you would assume is the bilge. So there was another hatch on this side that we didn't see. Um, no, I'd like there's... To... there's a hatch that, if you look up, you see a hatch that goes up to the main deck, and there's a hatch on the floor that leads down into what you assume is the bilge. Yeah, by hatch, she means that giant square. Yeah, exactly. Floor that's, and that's the big this ten, like 10 by 10. Yep, this thing here. Oh, oh, out here? Sorry. Yep, he put it in red. Oh, okay. Sorry, I meant this room on the far back left aft. Okay, oh. well, we'll just say that you guys are exploring this room first. So that's what you see there. All right. Yeah, we'll wander over and actually look down further. Like there, there's another layer of hold below this. Yeah, you can see uh, just darkness as you peer through the hatch into the the what appears to be the bilge. You can see a little bit of a ripple of water. You can see, you know, gloom essentially. It seems to stretch the full width of the ship, and for as far as you can see, the full length. Um, you don't see any bulkheads or anything. I always hate that part of the ship. This must be the bottom of the ship. Uh, do you have a torch or anything that, or do you have you have dark vision? Don't you? I have dark vision. Um, let's see. It's really hard, even with dark vision. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty, you know, gray. But there appears to be like a thick layer of sand right around the mast. Other than that, you see water, kind of greasy water, just kind of sloshing back and forth roll hey, a perception gosh. check for me theo one second not like that <laughs> yeah that's you don't get a whole a whole lot more than that it's it's dark and it stinks and it's it's the bilge That's all Theo's going to do, walking around in his creaking icy armor. As, I guess, Theo and Byron, as you're kind of hanging out in the cargo hold, you do take a look at the, at the silk. There are these rolls of silk that are lashed down down here. And it looks to be, no, I mean, it looks to be super high quality. And they were, it appears as though they were taking good care to, to make sure that it wasn't getting damaged. Um, oh, boy. Yeah, it looks, it looks really nicely made. So, oh, um, who was in charge here again? Uh, Fritz, Fritz, right here. Theo, in fact, just, like, raises his hand and goes, Fritz, um, where did you get these? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, we, uh, we acquired them in a bit of a, uh, you know, like it was a bit of a tense situation. The supplies were acquired. I mean, you know, we pirated the shit. Well, it, the, the question I have is, um, was it local or was it further up the coast? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was further up the coast. I mean, we didn't get it right here, you know. That's I mean, fine. That means we can, we, we won't, when we get to port, there will not be someone waiting and going, oh, shit, that's my silk, which is not what we want. No, God, no. We don't want that. Uh, um, you know, the plan was we were going to bring all this, uh, you know, north and, and sell it. So, you know, for whatever that's worth. I mean, I, you know, I wasn't involved in a lot of the logistics and, and tactical planning. But, you know, uh, that's what I got for you. Um, Runar, you have the, uh, the map fragment, right? One of, we have two map fragments, is that correct? What kind of map fragments you got? Let's talk uh, about that some other time. Perhaps. That sounds interesting. Uh, is it like a treasure map or something? I think, I 
think we should see if he knows about it. Yeah, let me see. Uh, I could take a look at it. I mean, if you want me to take a peek at the maps, might be able to give uh, you some, maybe some later. advice or yeah. Yeah, you're right. I, mean, I don't you, want you to look you know, at it you, yet. You kind of dropped like... a bomb on me. I, I wasn't ready to to learn about a bunch of secret maps, but I could maybe help you out. Maybe we could have a, a, you know, a discussion I'm later. Down. <laughs> maybe we could have a private discussion later when we, you know, talk about wages and negotiate negotiate a little bit. I'm gonna ask Theo to grab Fritz so I can. Whoa, like, whoa, whoa, whoa! No need for that, guys. I mean, we already pretty much surrendered. Yep, I get that. I don't, I don't, I just, I want to make sure you don't have anything that I want. Yeah, I mean, you you search him? Yeah, I'm going to search him. I'm going to search his pockets. I'm going to search yeah. for anything. Uh, that... He's got a, a coin a coin pouch on his belt. He's got um, a light hammer. He's got a hook and a dagger. His clothes uh, are, you know, he's got some decent, decent clothing. And he has... Hold on a sec, just because it's fun. Uh, oh, weird. He's got a glass in his pocket. He's got a glass jar containing a weird bit of flesh that floats in a pickling fluid. <laughs> I love that chart so much. Uh... Just look at it. Yeah, don't you know? Don't ask. It, it's best if you don't ask. <laughs> you gonna get that stone back on somewhere? I, 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 oh I don't shit! Think so I think I'm gonna take it from him. Yeah, it's yours, man. Take it. You know, I don't. It's not. I don't. Not attached to it anymore. Obviously. If there's oh, no I way don't. a little no, bit of flesh in a it. jar is cursed. Nah, just give it Couldn't back happen. Now. Yeah, I'll just. Okay, he doesn't have what I was thinking he might have. Oh, just thanks. You know, I was just—I was, I was going to get this checked out at the next port, but I appreciate that. Let's not take anything from these guys right now. Okay, okay. Yeah, you know, I, I agree. Uh, smart guy, it's best not to steal from your crew. Uh, you continue to look around. The casks are filled with brandy. And there's, a, uh, as you take a little bit of an inventory, there's approximately 40 of them. There's another 40 casks filled with wine. My map just went dark. I don't know. I can't see anything. Um, and then there is also, interestingly enough, it's because somebody took the torch. There is a large crate that is unlabeled. What's in the big crate? Uh, well, I mean, I you know I'm not privy to every little detail of what's in the cargo. I'll walk over and I'll take out my crowbar. Okay. And I'll hand it to Fritz. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I get the picture. He uh, he p takes it from you and he starts prying it open. And let's see, I'll roll a... I might as well roll a little strength check for this guy. Uh, you know, it takes him... I would say it takes him about five minutes to pry off the, the lid. And as you guys all peer inside, you see, um, actually, let's see. Everybody roll an investig or, uh, intelligence check. Who is looking inside the crate? I'll check it. Just straight intelligence. Yeah. Wow, nice. Oh, that's an intelligence save. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. You don't no, have a just, modifier. It should be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah just be intelligence check. Horrible rolls 15, tonight. 15, yeah. 6. Here Glad we're not five. fighting people. Um, I'm going to give, Aaron, I'm going to give you advantage. So go ahead and roll again. All right. Boom, son. Wow. Well, there you go. Natural 20. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it definitely looks like very high quality mining equipment. <laughs> Does it have the, 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 Mine's logo on the box. Or on uh, the box. As you look at the box and, and scope it out a little bit, yeah, you do see a faint. It was kind of scratched out a little bit, like with maybe a knife or something, but you do see the uh, the pickaxes over the top of a cut gem. Okay. Hmm. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, that looks uh, expensive. Like, well, we already knew this was going down, so. Yep. Yeah. Should we, should we send these guys back 
to shore in that boat and have them collect the rest of the bounty? The rest of the stuff. Oh, yeah, the rest stuff. of the stuff we left. Yeah, that's, you know that part is not in our contract. You know that's uh, I just have to say that you was don't have a, a contract. San Valet's crew was to, supposed to bring things out. We signal, yeah. they signal They're back. All dead. Yep, San Valet's <laughs> crew is dead. Well, shit. I guess yeah, we're gonna so be doing your it crew. then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I see what you're getting at. Yep, you do. I'll send some of the guys. How was that sound? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, you don't want me to go. I'm sort of the leader guy, you know. That's fair. Yeah. And if they don't come back, we'll kill you. Whoa. Well, that seems a bit aggressive. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if I agree to that deal. Well, I mean. Yeah, I don't think we need to do that. I know. Thank you. I'm, I like guys, that. Thank come you. Come on, I'm trying to be piratey. So, this dwarf oh, seems reasonable, but you, sir, a uh, bit aggressive. I don't know. I'm going to storm off. I'm just going to stop us and do and storm off. He's, uh, he's never been involved in labor management negotiations, huh? That's oh. his, um, he I'll is offer, I'll offer uh, two gold for each man that goes and gets the cargo and brings it back to the ship. Oh, money talks. I like this. Hey, fellas, who wants to volunteer to head back and get the, get the cargo from the, uh, the old hideout? couple of gold pieces for you and you, a couple of guys step forward easy enough you're able to uh to pay three of them so six gold all right uh all lined up and ready to go with the payback more flies with honey yep <laughs> and then uh you can see fritz kind of goes over and says listen guys if you uh if you don't come back you know they're gonna fucking kill me so you know like don't be a fucking asshole on this deal and uh you oh, know yeah and you pay you get paid when you get back so Oh, okay. Shit, do we have to give this there. back to you? <laughs> Sorry, I, yeah, I guess that was the intention. Son of a... Okay. Uh, I took it off my sheet already, but um, that was my intention, was to pay them when they got back shit. so they wouldn't just leave with all the stuff. Okay, fair enough. That makes more sense. All right, so um, so uh, you're able to... Uh, really generous lately. <laughs> <laughs> no know, problem. He's a public figure now. He has to be. We just met. Yeah. You, we got to work on that get, level. It's good to get off on the right foot. You know what I mean? Before you get paid up front. Yeah. He, uh, Fritz, is, seems pretty pretty relieved at this point. He's getting kind of relaxed around you guys a little bit. But um, you're able to send a couple of guys back in your boat. Uh, it takes some time, but they're able to, you know, come back and load the, the dwarven mine uh, supplies onto the Sea Ghost. And... Yeah. Uh, Yep. Are they getting the brandy and the silk that was back there too? Uh, if that's what you told them to do, they grabbed everything that was there. It it takes a little extra time, but they're able to, you know, get everything together and bring it out to the ship. Yeah. What do you guys think? We should get them. Should just take it all, right? Yeah. At this point, we should load oh, up this right. ship one way or the yeah. other. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, where does Fritz stay up front with the rest of the guys? I mean, at this point, you know, like, everybody's probably on deck, like, trying to figure out what to do with the dead bodies, um, you know, probably trying to get, you know, things kind of ready for whatever the next, you know, they're, they're looking to you, whoever, uh, they're assuming you're the captain at this point, um, um, and trying to figure out what the, next, what the next move is, but there's a bunch of dead bodies on the, on the main deck. Can we, uh, can we have a moment to talk, guys? Just, yeah. Oh, desk, yeah, yeah. Know? Okay, yeah, no problem, fellas. Uh, hey, gentlemen, let's uh, let's all head up to the main deck, and uh, we'll start cleaning up. How's that sound? Wonderful. Sounds good. Okay, so they this all... Back, this back left room hasn't been searched yet. They all take off and head back up to the deck, main deck. Um, all right, so you're going to take a look at this last room here. Yeah. The we'll center of the cabin it. sits a plain wooden table. Uh, there's a pewter flagon and a pewter mug. On the table, besides the table is a wooden chair. Hanging over the table is an unlit wooden uh, lantern. Um, this chest on the floor, right here. Byron, yep. You want to take yeah, a look there's at a that sea chest there. Us? Um, yeah. There's been a lot of traps on here so far, and this yep. looks like a private quarter. I'll, I'll step over and double check it for traps. 
uh, go ahead and roll an investigation check. Uh, it does not appear to be trapped. I will open it. More clothes! Uh, <laughs> all right, you pop it open. Um, yeah, it contains a bunch of grubby garments of no value. Yep, I anticipated this, guys. However, uh, concealed in the garments is a locked iron box. Oh, what? I will check it for traps um it is uh go ahead and roll another investigation check for me nice uh yeah you don't see any you don't see any traps no de traps detected on this thing okay and is it, it is it, locked is it though it locked? Yep. um i will pick it okay uh thieves tool dexterity Um, yeah, you're able to pop it open. The lid snaps open. No problem. Uh, there, there's a dagger inside. There are 200 silver pieces, and there seems to be a letter. I will open the letter. It starts out saying, Dear Fritz, oh, how I miss you. Those days spent in the gardens, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's essentially a letter to Fritz from uh, what appears to be a lover. I will put it back in the box, and I will take out the dagger, and I will uh, investigate it to see if it looks ornate or, or or anything like that. Not really. I mean, it's it's a it's a nice dagger. It's well made, but it's it's not. Uh, it doesn't look super flashy or anything like that. Yeah, I'll put it back in the box. Just put the box back in the chest. All right. I was wondering if this was Fritz Quarters. Speaking of gentlemen, um, what the fuck is our play here? Um, obviously, we get the goods, we deliver them to the dwarves, um, but uh, once we get back to Salt Marsh, these are fucking pirates. I don't think we want to hold on to them. Right. Well, I think we could s probably. We could, I think Go we ahead. Could use this. I'm just saying. Um, I think we could use this time to kind of figure out if their allegiance is anywhere. You know, you know, they're maybe they're just dudes working for money. Pirates. You know, it's not like a. I mean, what would Runar know about pirate crews? In terms of what, like, what's the question that you're asking? Like, are these guys just like basically dudes that end up working on boats for money, or are they like swearing an oath to like some kind of like pirate brotherhood? And you know, it's like a sacred bond or something you know what i mean like are sure. they how what how would i i wouldn't i know somehow if they're like diehard pirate like roll a roll a cutthroats versus just some roll a, um water vehicles with intelligence okay i'm really digging these uh these proficiencies these vehicle proficiencies mm -hmm. they're useful they're a good way to simulate you know actual like class or not class background skills yeah i agree Yeah, so so you you actually are fairly familiar with with pirate culture. Um, not not only having studied as when you were becoming a marine early in your military career, but just sort of being around the block a few times. There are definitely certain crew members of pirate crews that are diehard uh, ruffians and scallywags and uh, people who will die for their captain. People who will fight to the death and rape and pillage and burn to the ground anything that gets in their way. Then there are a whole bunch of other people who are pretty much laborers with with knives. They are, um, you know, what you would equate to sort of like grunts who are thrown into a situation. Um, maybe they, you know, they signed up because they needed money, but they don't. Their allegiance is more towards themselves and self-preservation uh, than it is towards a captain. And you get the sense based on the conversation, yeah, based on the conversation that you've had and the time that you've spent with Fritz and these guys that were hiding, essentially, I mean, they didn't, there's a reason they didn't run up and, and try to help with the fight, correct? Exactly. 
Yeah. So you get the sense that these guys are sort of the latter, where they're they're laborers, they're hired hired crew members, and they might be able to fight, and they look tough, and they're they look mean and and gritty, and they fit the archetype of a pirate, but they don't necessarily, you know, they're not um, ide- ideologically they're not um, they're not savages. They're pirates because they're paid to be. Correct. They can pay yeah. to be something else. Yep. They're paid to work on a boat that, you know, they know they're going to get into some situations. There's nothing more trustworthy than a man whose loyalty can be bought with gold. <laughs> All right. So I don't, I think as long as these guys get paid, we're not going to have a mutiny on our hands. Okay. And that brings up the serious question. Are we going to be boat owners? Well, I don't really want to get rid of it. <laughs> what do you guys think? I have a few options or a few ideas for what we can do with this boat. I mean, I have money. I could pay these guys don't make 5 gold a day, I can tell you that much. I have money. I could pay these guys for a while. Um depending on what their true wages actually are. Um you know, so we could sail this thing around. We'd have to rechristen it and take strike all their colors, mm-hmm. kind of rework this boat to make it look like our own, and hopefully avoid anybody figuring out what boat this was. How ornate is the back of this boat? Is this like a highly recognizable boat, or is it pretty oh, like general? One thing like, I would say. One thing I would say boat? is, um, we did get hired to take care of the boat. So I think it's okay saying this is our boat now uh, and that it, it was this boat. Yeah. Um, I think mo- mostly the problem is the crew uh, because, again, most towns, if you show up and you were on a pirate crew and that people know that, they string you up on the gallows. Uh, right. And I don't necessarily – they're fucking got... pirates, but I don't want them you know, necessarily hung. Mm-hmm. Well, what we could do is this. Well, they um... – they know how long we've been gone from Salt Marsh. How about we just take another week before we go back to Salt Marsh? In that time, we'll return the mine's goods, and we'll keep the rest of the stuff on here. Don't we have something that's going on in Salt Marsh though? Like, isn't the lizard folk? Yeah, but uh, we haven't we haven't um, we haven't you know signed up for anything yet. Hold on, hold on for just a second. Does someone have those navigation maps? I thought you did. We have a collection of maps. Yeah, that's fine. As long as as long as the my character has book. them, uh, Theo's going to take them. He's going to side drop the weird icy armor for a second, kind of shake his hand. For the record, that thing is super uncomfortable to keep up for like longer than five minutes. Um, <laughs> cold. And uh, he's going to bust out his navigator's tools and look at the maps because they're a good set of local maps and just kind of do the math of how long would it take to sail to Seton and back. All right, yeah, roll uh, water vehicles with intelligence. Or navigator's tools, I guess. Could I assist? Uh, No. Okay. Nice. Oh, that wasn't the water vehicles, though. Well, the, my ro- water vehicles is set to wisdom, and it's oh, okay. difficult to just change on the fly. So I just rolled straight. All right. So your question was, how long would it take to get to Seton? Yeah, how long would it take to sail to Seton? Back? I would say, based on your knowledge, it would take you at a slow pace uh, with a good crew that was helping you operate this craft. You could probably make it there in uh, let me look at the map real quick. Out of character, it looks like a couple days, I think, but I don't know the sailing rules and all that. Um, let's see, you guys are at here. Sorry, I should probably know this just off the top of my head, but I don't. Well, you can also just, you know, whatever value sounds good for the story would also be okay. I would say it's probably not more than, if all goes well, eight hours. 
probably. A day, maybe a day's journey. Theo's going to do that math and go, look, look. We get the goods on board. We sail to the dwarves. Um, we kill another day doing whatever the hell we want. Then we sail back to Saltmarsh. That is enough time so that we could say legitimately, we got the boat. We sailed at the seat. And we took on a fresh crew. These are our nice crew people. Um, right. And as long as they all know the story and keep their fucking mouth shut, we're okay. That's exactly what I was going to say. We just pretend that we picked up this crew. Take a little bit longer to get back. Yep. And it only has to be a couple of days, because if we're being honest, we could probably sail to Seton in like a day, provided nothing stupid happened. Um, not that I'm saying we should do that, because it's a shit town, but that's how the story would work best. Now, question. What do we do with all this cargo? Fucking sell it, man. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, too. I, I have no qualms about selling pirated cargo. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Well, no, I'm into it. it. You know, I mean, donate it, but um, I don't think there's anyone in Salt Marsh I like enough. Although, and Theo stops for a second. Uh, certain people in town might be interested in uh, acquiring it first and then obfuscating the source it came from um, to help us out. I don't know how over or underhanded some of the individuals are. Yeah, I don't think moving the brandy is going to be too hard. You but, guys I mean, notice that the brandy uh, is also marked with the uh, dwarven mine insignia. As you, <laughs> as you so we're going to, to have to return all that shit. Just like the whole boat, like they have all those casks down below. Uh, half of them, half, oh, four, wow. forty of them are marked with the dwarven mine insignia, along with the the crate that has the mining equipment. Th those are obviously belong to the mine. So um, we return everything that has the mine seed chisel on it, get back to uh, port, and go. The rest of it is salvage, and we claim, lay claim to it. Right. Should be fine if my understanding of maritime law is correct. Absolutely. Yep. Then we sell it, and then I have an idea. All right. I've been reading through Dralium's journal more. Um, just what we've already deciphered. Um, and I'm starting to draw connections. Oh, don't things. say what I think you're about to say. Just hear me out. Just hear me out. So the lizard folk are are we understand that the lizard folk weren't preparing to attack the town, mm -hmm. that these uh, they were preparing for an assault by this other species, right? Mm -hmm. And assault. the lizard folk, um, Dralian's journal mentions a lizard-like group of people in the in the Ulmen, um area uh, near Tomoachan. Yeah. Hypothetically speaking, if we could get into contact with the lizard folk and in some way communicate with them, maybe they know more about Tomoa Chan. And then, assuming we continue our research of Dralian's journal and, um, you know. I thought they were being attacked by the Sahu again. Uh, the Sahu who, who are a much closer <laughs> enemy than Tomoa Chan. Yeah. Yep. yep. So we're going to fight them, obviously. We're going to help That's out. But I mean, the lizard folk, right? Yeah. Are, are not the bad guys, is right. how I'm, was what I'm understanding. So if we talk to the, the lizard folk, we might be able to gain. I mean, they might. I mean, are if they, they're. If they species. Mentioned, are they mentioned they, in the journal? No. The journal mentions a lizard like group of people similar to troglodytes. Um, yeah. Uh, but I mean, lizard and lizard, do you see what I'm saying? You know, right. connection. That's racist. So, <laughs> no. Species. Hey, I got uh, nothing those. against lizards, all right? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Sounds like you're uh, trying to keep them down. I'd hire the lizard folk. I'd hire them. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, what if we were able to learn more about the Tomoa Chan while also solving a problem for Salt Marsh, while also retaining a ship, and potentially finding treasure right yeah fuck it, let's do it. i mean the ship is just gonna sail to narisman where uh yeah. the solana person was supposed to be we could sail to grad Zool. we could sail to grad Zool. Yeah, i'm if you very really familiar right with this boat is only going to help us i think with no you're right things. you're right and i i do love a boat i'm not going to lie we should <laughs> Get our story straight, tow it, let's go up on deck, 
and yeah. talk to the, I will get the story straight with the crew and we'll go from there. Okay. All right, so you guys head back up to the, the upper deck, and as you emerge, uh, you see that, yeah, indeed, these guys are quickly getting to work uh, cleaning up the deck. They've already thrown a bunch of the bodies overboard. Um, they're just like good riddance. They say their goodbyes. And um, they're getting rid of some of these dead bodies. Let me bring you guys over here. back on the on the party barge over here let's see a couple of the guys you can see get a little choked up when they toss the captain overboard but you got to do what you got to do Diego will in fact walk over as they do and offer a prayer to Heronius at that point on base principle anyway. Yeah, Runar's just being respectful. <laughs> Wait, should we take his head so we can turn him in? Maybe he's no, worth it. No, no. Take his head. No. Okay, just check him. We got the boat. And uh, once once the the cleaning is done, but before we send the people um, off to pick up the goods, Theo was going to kind of gather up the crew and in kind of a sailor to sailor fashion um, given his background give them the look the plan is we're going to get the goods we're going to drop them off at the with the dwarves because it goes back to them and we're hired to get it back um, and then we're going to spend a day or two at anchor getting used to everything then when we're going to get back to town because we're based out of salt marsh at the moment when we get back you are all a nice crew we took on from seaton um, and you have never pirated in your life. Yeah, you hear that, guys? We're all from Seton. Uh, I think that seems like a real good plan. Uh, everybody on board with that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you bet. Yep. Appears that they're all, all very good boys. they're all on board. All right. All right. Let's get to work. Uh, is that pile of nice clothing still on the deck? Yeah. Anything that you guys had had thrown onto the deck is is there at this point. Okay. Um. I'm going to look for the guys in the grungiest clothing, and I'm going to make them put on the nicer clothing. Okay, yeah. And throw their clothes, their grungy clothes overboard. Okay. I think that gotta, uh, gotta look kind of respectable. certainly raises morale as you uh, as you do so. Some of the guys are like, oh, thank you. Never had clean clothes before. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to get poop on it. Close. <laughs> you seen that where they live? Jeez. It was just like, hold on, you hold keep on. them this way now. That explains why I can smell you from here, That's way out here on the bowsprit. Oh God, I'm going to show every one of you a neat magic trick. You come here. Um, she walks up to the first one and uses prestigitation to clean him. <laughs> nice. And this moves down the line. Yeah, one of the guys is like, hey, what about do me, do me? I'm getting there. Hold on. And they get in line. And they line up for a quick, a quick uh, arcane douching. Eldritch, 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 <laughs> Eldritch showers, Eldritch, as it were. I've heard arcane douching, but I like them all. <laughs> but yeah, Theo's just like, okay, yeah, congratulations. Now you do not smell like you have been pirates. Oh. We'll, we'll uh, get to scrubbing everything else later. Fantastic. Uh, Fritz walks up to. Eventually, he walks up to um, Runar, and he says. Uh, yeah, well, so there's a couple of, uh, couple of items to kind of iron out, if, if you don't mind. We could have a quick, quick conversation about that. Uh, Certainly. Is that something, something we can discuss? So, you know, most of these, uh, these unskilled fellas, not to, not to be derogatory or nothing, you know, they're good guys. Uh, but they, you know, typically get paid one gold per day when we're at sea. Uh, and if you, uh, when we're in port, they get half, half pay. So just keep that in mind, you know, as you budget sort of your operating budget for going forward here. Um, okay. Myself, I, I get paid 15 gold a day uh, as the, uh, you know, I tend to be sort of like the, the fix-it guy around here, the bosun, so to speak. Uh, I can do a lot of different things for you, though, whatever you need. If you need, a, you know, a helmsman, I can certainly help with that. Um, you know, first mate, I, I assume you got that covered already with one of your fellas, but... Uh, you know, whatever you need, you just keep me posted. But you know, uh, you know, 
I would, you know, if, I'd hate to take a pay cut, you know. So uh, I'm gonna, I'd like to check and see if he's lying. All right, go ahead and roll. He... Yeah, roll a uh, uh, insight check. So, uh, two things. A, you don't get the sense that he is, uh, he's trying to pull one over on you. you he seems like he's, he's essentially um, trying to basically negotiate on the part of his crew and himself. And you also yeah. know uh, a little bit about crews. Um, you've, uh -huh. never, you've never had your own crew. But you know that you know, standard pay for an unskilled laborer is around a gold a day. Okay. That's, that's so not unreasonable. Well, I was for, more for a skilled, about yep. So for a skilled crew member, it can be anywhere from f you know five gold on the low end to three hundred gold a day. Now okay. three hundred gold a day is going to be for like a deck wizard, you know, or right. someone who has some some serious skills uh, for a specific task. So, so continues to go back to being a sailor. Well, you you probably made a pretty good wage too when you were when you were sailing, you know, for whatever whatever position that that Theo would have had on on a crew, he would have made you know a consistent salary. And so, how much he asked for fifteen gold a day? Mm -hmm. And then he said half pay when they're ashore. You know, that's pretty Three much that's days. been the going rate. I, you know, I'd hate to take a pay cut. But I am happy right, to be alive, you. too, so, you know. Right. All right, tell you what. You get that wage. But Deal. But get to port. Yeah. Um, keep your men in line, and we won't have any problems. That sounds good. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, you know, am I, am I going to be, like, your, uh, your quartermaster now? Or, you know, you want me yeah, to be, I mean, be kind of a liaison between the, you and the crew? Is that the... Uh, be happy to do it. It's an honor, sir. Yeah, Ca I mean, Captain I Captain Degg. I saw that those were your quarters down below. That yes, sir. That port aft quarters. So I, you know, I want you to resume the the position you had. Well, I thank you. Thank you for uh, you know sparing our lives and and putting us to work. That's the most important thing here. We'll be able to pay. Uh, we'll be able to feed our families, and uh, you know, it's an honor, sir, to serve with you. Right. And you can tell he's laying on a little thick now, but he yeah. he seems yeah. he seems pretty he seems pretty thankful to be alive. Okay. All right. So, all right. Uh, I'm gonna get get to it, sir. Then thank you. And he kind of heads down and and starts you know working with the crew to get things ready. A couple of the guys have already left to go retrieve the the cargo from the cavern. And uh, is there anything else anybody wants to do at this point on the deck? I think I'll pay the the six guys that are Fritz. I'll pay their their first ten days, so we don't have to worry about it. All right. So I'll give all of them ten gold. Well, I, I think we should gold total. At some point, we should start a pool of like the ship fund. Yep, basically. I agree. I agree. Um, I just figured for the first ten days, like uh, as a gesture of goodwill. Because I pay them each sixty I'm gold. Kind of mean. I'm gonna pay them. 60 for, gold total or six yeah six gold each 10 10 gold each or 10 gold each got it all right 10 gold each okay like so their pound. first 10 days wages thank you sir thank you thank you they're all very grateful and it, it, they've never usually they get paid when they get back to port but they're pretty stoked so typically like with a with a crew you'll go and sail for x number of days and then when you get back to port you pay them as they disembark and go spend their money, you know. And the reason that you do that is because in a, on a lot of crews, gambling <laughs> is not encouraged while at sea because it, it tends to erode morale. So that's why ah. you typically wouldn't pay people when they're at sea. You'd wait until you get back to port. But just, just an FYI, you've already, you've already paid them, so they're pretty you've stoked. already paid them. Yep, they're stoked. It's all right, we're uh, a little flush right now. We it might get tight later, so just FYI. <laughs> um, okay, so time passes. Uh, you know, a couple couple more hours pass. The rowboat uh, or the small watercraft comes back with the cargo from the uh, cavern, and uh, there's a little bit of confusion on roles and responsibilities. Um, but 
essentially Theo like will step in and kind of help smooth that out as he's been a sailor long enough that he knows the at least okay no you do that you do that you do that okay come on perfect so you guys know those of you who have a sailing or marine uh background or smuggling or any anything that's associated with ships you know that you need a captain right you need a first mate or a slash quartermaster those can be two different roles or the same role you need a helmsman uh those are like the bare bones roles that you need to be able to pirate a craft you can have a a boatswain a cook and a master gunner those are all additional roles that could be fulfilled and then you need a crew obviously to help you implement the orders that you give so at the very least you need a captain i'm going to um i have these uh roles laid out so i'm going to show these to you show to everyone so there's the captain first mate and there's different roles that these different actions that these roles can take during combat for example versus traveling so there's All the right. first mate helmsman master gunner and a cook cook is important on a ship so the captain for example um, it's good if they have high intelligence and charisma scores. It's good. It's important for them to have proficiency with water vehicles, charisma, persuasion, and intimidation. During combat, they can take a couple of different uh, actions. We won't get into that right now because we're not in combat. But the traveling role, usually the captain is sort of helping to chart a course, so he would be kind of considered a navigator. And really, the navigator helps to support the helmsman. The helmsman is the crucial one who's actually piloting the ship. Um, and so uh, if you look at the helmsman roles and responsibilities, for example, they have, um, let's see, where is it? There it is. They have a couple of different types of actions that they can take in combat. Again, don't, don't dig into that too much right now. It's not necessary. But from a travel role, they're the pilot. So they're the ones that make the checks to be able to stay on course, if that makes sense. The captain can help make a check that gives them a, like, uh, an additional bonus to their roles. So that's kind of how that works. Okay. Gunners, obviously, they're going to be involved with mostly combat-related actions. Uh, the bosun slash boatswain, uh, Byron knows that pr role pretty well. It's essentially yep. the carpenter, the guy that fixes things on the ship. Obviously, ships need constant upkeep. I mean, it's not like, you know, you just set it and forget it. These things require a lot of work, um, and I can fill you in more on that maybe uh, over, the, over the break between sessions to get you a little bit up to speed on what it takes. Um, and then the first mate slash quartermaster, again, that can be two separate roles or the same role. They're the liaison between the crew and the captain. So high charisma is important. Um, you know, a ability to communicate essentially is what they do. So that gives you a little bit about what the role, what the different roles are on the ship. So you've got a little bit about that. You've got a crew. Um, this happens to be a, what would be considered a, a merchant yacht, uh, class vehicle. It requires a minimum of six people to operate. That'd be considered the skeleton crew. Uh, if you had 12 people total, you'd be at full, full staff, so to speak. Um, what do we have now? We have, we have 11. 11. Yep, so you're just just shy of having a full crew. Um, but yeah, so you can kind of, now that you kind of have a, some basic information about what, what we're looking at, and I can obviously fill you in on a lot more detail on the, what I'm considering to be sort of like the, exp, the, the high seas exploration option of this, pretend, of this campaign, should you guys decide to go that route, we'll get more into that. But for now, I don't think we need to delve too much deeper into that. Nice. Dibs on boats, Wayne. <laughs> the only thing I'm going to toss out there is that Theo has maximized charisma. Um, right. So, uh, first mate. He's actually. I've been. I literally just spent the last half hour role playing him doing the job as listed for first mate. Anyway, I was like, oh, well. I guess I better be the master gunner then. <laughs> yeah, Runar has 
All right, charisma, not the not the best. So, but I have a decent that, intelligence, so I can hear intimidation, right? And also, your runar, you kind of have to be the captain. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds All right. Good. So, who's going to be the helmsman? Um. Let's see. We need water vehicles. Ah, see, I would be decent at helmsman as well, but. I mean, you could do both. Yeah, you could. You could do both. I could do both in the meantime, I guess. I do not have water vehicles. You know, maybe at some point we hire on a helm. Perhaps. Well, at that case, my thought is let um, Theo do first mate and helmsman. helmsman. Yeah, probably. I've got, you know, that proficiency. And more importantly, looking at the ship captain, uh, when you're doing traveling, the captain supports the helmsman. Correct. Uh, so that way... We have, instead right. of you just trying to do it by yourself, we have two people doing it. It would be right. ideal to have two people in separate, you know, have a separate people for those two roles, for sure. Yeah, and, and that's what we did for, like, when we were piloting the little jolly boat, so, you know. All right. So we'll have so... Theo as helmsman and, you know, you know, first mate pro temp or vice versa. Okay. Sounds, Sounds good. good. All right, I like yeah. it. All right, so... You've loaded the cargo from the Dwarven mine back onto the ship. You have disposed of the bodies. You've commiserated with the remaining crew with their what their cover story is going to be. Um, you've negotiated a wage and actually prepaid for a 10 days of work for uh, everybody except for Fritz. <clears throat> and you have um, you have assigned roles. What would you like to do at this point? Sail to the mine, I think. Well, it's so. I mean, it's nighttime. It is. We long rest. could we could rest. I think we need a long rest. Fuck yeah, I'd love to take a long rest. Uh, let's post a watch. <laughs> um, I have fifteen health right now, so yes, yeah. I'm all about a uh, long rest. So how about we cram into the uh, the quarters that were in the aft section on the top deck, yeah. uh, was what was clearly captain and first mate. Uh, if we're gonna, you know, post watches, we'll post watches, but that gives us a smaller area to worry about. Yep. So I think we should post a watch, have somebody stand like outside the door on deck or something. Um, I'm actually not really worried about the the guys that I paid already. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm worried I'm about more, Fritzy. Yeah, just I'm worried. Less about the guys, but more about just staying in this spot. Um, you know, just in case. I think it's just a good idea to just keep a watch posted. In that case, we should probably keep a watch. Let's do it inside, because we don't... Okay. Like, you know, we'll explicate this. We don't want them to know we don't trust them at first. We want to pretend we trust them, but also be ready in the event something goes wrong. Now, is it, now as a... Wouldn't we know that there would need to be somebody on watch for a ship anyway, though? Yes. Yes, like, but I mean, you know that it's a good idea. That. So, do one of these crew members are they standing watch? Sir, we'll uh, we'll do whatever whatever you want us to do, sir. Theo says, "Okay, um, I'll organize a watch." Then, are you saying that we want us to also be parts of the watch? It's I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm, I'm, you know, I think it's a good idea. I think we'll Myron's rotate. just gonna curl up and take a nap. Yeah, we'll rotate. One of us stays on board with the. How about uh, we'll have a rotating shift of two crew members, and one of us. Sounds I wonderful. Think. And uh, just wake me up when it's my turn. Okay, I'll take it first. <laughs> you just turns around and goes, "Okay, who's on first watch with me?" Looks at you know. The, not, the sailors. not Byron. <laughs> Byron's already sleeping. <laughs> he has a tendency to sleep through watch. Sing it. All right. <laughs> That's fair. He does. So you're gonna have uh, one one person from your party on watch, and then one person from the the crew. So you can have two people on watch. Sure. Yeah. Why don't we do one? We'll on go with one. that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so who's going to take the first watch? If you, uh, whoever that's going to be, roll a Theo. perception check. Theo. 
Nice. Um, okay, so everybody pretty much decides to head down to the, to the lower decks and, and rest. Uh, one of the other guys stays up uh, above decks, and he kind of looks at you and kind of shrugs, and then he walks up to the, uh, the forecastle and uh, spends some time just kind of keeping watch. And you get the sense that he's, um, he's pretty tired. Like, uh, you can see him sort of like nodding and then he sort of slaps himself in the face and walks around a little bit and he's kind of doing some like jumping jacks to try to stay awake. Theo's uh, going to walk up and just start talking to him. Just, uh, you guys been running really hard the past couple of days or you just didn't get any sleep before this all happened because you were just on watch? Well, you know, it's been a long day. Uh, <clears throat> we, uh, yeah, I mean, once you guys arrived, we got a little... You know, we got nervous and tucked ourselves down in the cargo hold. Um, but, yeah, I haven't slept since, you know, last, you know, it's almost been 16, 18, 20 hours. God, I don't know. But, yeah, I'm tired. But, you know, we'll get through it. Uh, it's important to have a watch. I'm, I'm all in, my friend. Tell me, what's your, uh, what's your name? Oh, hello. I'm Theo. Um, I, I may or may not get a fancy title after that, but I'm Theo. Um, I've uh, so all you're... spent a few too many years on ships like this myself. What's your name? Uh, my name's Korga. Korga? Yeah, Korga. And, Where are you uh, from, really? Well, I, uh, you know, I've shit all over the place. Um, I was, you know, born in near a small village near uh, Split Rock, just up, you know, north of here. I don't know if you've ever been up the north northern coast. I've uh, sailed through there once or twice on the shipping routes. Yeah, um, grew up uh, fishing actually off the shore there, and uh, you know, took to the drink a little bit too much. Ended up getting in with the wrong crowd, and it's pretty cliche, but I, you know, eventually I ended up meeting up with uh, with this crew here, and I mean the money was good. You know that was the thing is like it's hard to hard to turn down, you know, a consistent wage uh more money that i could make fishing that's for damn sure so anyhow you know i certainly don't feel good about everything i've done over the last you know six months or so but uh it is what it is well you're not fucking wrong there um the best i can tell you is we're going to uh keep you in pay and um not have you doing anything you're going to regret later at least not like piratey. Um, oh, that'd be the first to say. Maybe we do something stupid like um, <laughs> help attack a layer of monsters now and then. We, we I whoa, think whoa, we're whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, whoa, hold on now. Oh, uh, you wouldn't be because we are not getting you anywhere near that. Okay. We, on the other hand, like what might make a bad decision. Like what kind of monsters are we talking about here? Um. You heard of Sahelgan? Shit, yeah. I know what those suckers are. I got a contract out probably in the next week to... Uh, Savage beasts. Yeah, we're going to put some of them down probably. Us. Again, us. Not you. You guys might would get us near and that would be it. Yeah, okay. I mean, you know, be careful. Those things are mean. But yeah, okay. Um, where are you... I mean, how'd you end up with this dead guy? The honest truth? Yeah. I got hired to, to uh, pick up his corpse. What? <laughs> okay, so. This seems I like it's going to be a long story. I get off this goddamn <laughs> tramp friggin' salt marsh, right? And Theo's just going to tell a very, you know, fish that got away version of events that's just really dramatic. Mm. Um, roll, and roll a, uh, per, roll a um, performance check for me. Yeah, this guy is enthralled with your story. <laughs> he, he's he's hanging on every every bit of suspense that you try to you know inject into your storytelling, and he's totally he's all in. And yeah. then after we were done with the fucking badgers, um, well, the oh. rest is uh, it's just kind of a story. You know what? We'll get to that later. Um, I think that's the end of our watch. Let's go wake some people up. Sounds okay. good. And he's he seems like he's like feels like you're his new best friend, basically. <laughs> Maybe 
Yeah, I am. All right, who's uh, who is on the next watch? I'm gonna get up uh, Runar because right, um, you can't trust Byron to stay awake, and Irin was mostly dead at one point. Okay. I'll have Byron go last. <laughs> okay. All right, so Runar, you're on you're on uh, on watch with another one of the crew members, and he uh, he's won't look at you. He just won't even. <laughs> he he's not even gonna make eye contact. He just he hustles his way up to the to the uh, forecastle up at the bow and just kind of keeps an eye. That's all right. Uh, roll a perception check for me. Um, actually, uh, at one point you hear him, him shout out, Captain, Captain. And as he does, you look over to him and you kind of see this happening at the same time that he calls it out. Something in the darkness above the crow's nest kind of flies past. Humanoid creature just kind of fly. It could be a creature, it could be a beast, but something flew past the uh, crow's nest. What, what, what do you think that was? Parrot deer. <laughs> Did it look like a... It could have been a harpy or something? What was that? Could be. They're known to be around these areas. Fucking harpies. <sighs> Keep an eye out. Attracted to the dead bodies, perhaps? Could be. They're scavengers, no doubt about it. You ever fought harpies before? I have. Oh. Well, you know, they're vicious creatures, and they got that fucking song. You got to watch out for the song. And he's, he, uh, he pulls some lint out of his belly button, and he kind of balls it up <laughs> and sticks it in his ears. He's like, you got to use the belly button lint to keep the song out of your head. Belly Seriously, it's, tr- it's a proven, proven technique. What'd you say? I don't think I have that much belly button lint. Well, be careful. All right, you too, man. Hey, stay alert. Hey, Captain. Yeah. Good talking with you. And you. Stay alert. And then he goes, hey, Captain. Yeah. Hey, Cap. Uh, <laughs> my name's Tamis. Tamis. Good man. Runar. Thanks for, uh, thanks for not killing us. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. That's the uh, that's the extent of your watch. All right, so I'll wake up, Erin. All right. All right. Erin, you and uh, another one of the crew members get together and uh, head up above deck and take a watch. Go ahead and roll a perception check for me. Nice. Yeah, you Not you're bad. you're super serious. You're well rested at this point. You're you know, you're on high high alert essentially. And uh, you don't detect anything out of the ordinary other than a couple of times you hear a pretty loud fart coming from uh, from the guy that you're on on watch with. Uh, kind of like he's pushing them out. Fair enough. And then he giggles Chill a little bit. Mic on. He giggles? Oh, yeah, he, he giggles a little bit. Nice. <laughs> it's not weird. It's not weird. Uh, that's the end of your watch. Yeah. I, Unless I there's anything you want to do. At one point. Oh, you go over nice. to him? Nice. Yeah. 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 Like, hey. Yeah? Oh, yeah? God. <coughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Hey, that was good effort. It's the cabbage. It's kind of funny, You're though, right? Man. Yeah, I like I you know, I like yeah. I like cabbage with my sausage. I mean, who doesn't, right? Oh, that's fair. You know, we got a bunch of sausage down in the galley. Well, are you sure? Well, there was. <laughs> uh, maybe not a bunch. That cabbage, though, I don't know. It might be a little past the due date. I can tell. 
Yeah, stinks. Yeah. Hey, my name's uh, Kyle. Kyle, uh, you're in. Yeah, you're uh, you're a dwarf, right? Yeah. Uh, where I, I mean, where? You off. Well, you're short, and you look, you know, you're you're, you're dwarfish. Good looking. Yeah, uh, one of the, you know, you're a great, good looking dwarf for sure. Thanks. Where uh, whereabouts you from? I, I haven't seen many dwarves around here. Sure. You're not from the mine, are you? If you are, I'm real sorry about what we did over there. Yeah, you better be. But no, I'm not from there. No, oh, thank God. Those those fuckers. They Iron got. Gate. Oh yeah. Further east. Never heard of it. What From is that like? Some big, big dwarven city. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds cool. It's a nice place. Why are you here now? This is way far away, right? It is. Yeah. Looking for my brother. <laughs> He's also a dwarf. I figured. Are there half dwarves? Can that happen? I know there's half elves. You hm. would think that there. You would think that you could, but. Yeah, maybe it just doesn't. You know, he makes the sort of the symbol of the finger going in. You know, to the <laughs> <laughs> with his other hand. He's like, maybe it just doesn't work that way. I love these tables. I mean, something works. I don't know much about biology, so I'm the wrong guy uh, to ask. Yeah, me either. <laughs> but uh, how long have you been at sea? Oh, years. I mean, this is my chosen profession. Uh, I haven't always been, you know, and then he makes air quotes a pirate. But uh, you know, I've been sailing and, and moving cargo along the uh, the western coast of the Azure for you know quite some time. Mostly trips between. Um, Seton and uh, and Gradzul, but um, you know I got laid off. Times were tough. Um, eventually, you know I got picked up with uh, well one of the guys that you killed. Um, he hired me, uh, picked me out of a, a bar in Seton, and I've been with him ever since. Probably about two three years on this on the on the Sea Ghost. It's been a good run. I mean, we made some money. We, you know, it was a little hairy from time to time, but. Now, you ever come across a ship called the Griffin's Wing? Griffin's Wing. Oh, let me give that some thought here for a second. Mm. Nope, can't say that I have. <laughs> uh, is that? Uh, I don't know. It sounds sounds like a nice ship. I don't know. What do you? What? What about it? It's a good That's name. The... Shit, my brother was on. Mm. You know, I, in one place to maybe look would be the, uh, you know, each port, and this, typically we got to deal with this because it's a little sketchy being pirates and all, but, you know, there's, uh, there's a fair amount of red tape that goes with, you know, uh, you know, berthing in different, in different ports and stuff, but most of those... Uh, most of the customs guys in these ports keep keep documentation about ships coming and going. You might be able to get some information, uh, you know, depending on where we're headed next. I haven't I hadn't heard yet what the plan is, but uh, you could you could check in with the, the port authority folks and maybe get some information about that ship. Hmm. Just a thought. That's good advice, Kyle. Yeah, that's what I'm here for. Anyways. Huh. Yeah. Better finish this watch. That we should. Rest of the watch goes uneventful. Okay. Um, let's see, there's one more watch. I'm assuming, Byron, you're going to take this one? I guess. Yep. I will. Uh, there's, where are you sleeping, Byron? Uh, this rowboat. Oh. Yeah, yeah that's I'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll bang on the boat sit up my turn huh yep you're just gonna let me sleep through it huh nope no ah, shoot okay I'll get out and uh I'll go ahead and take out Albrecht's journal okay you uh you pull uh, out the journal and you see another one of the crew members uh walk up and give you a kind of a nod and says and he says i'll be up i'll go uh, i'll take the forecastle sounds like a plan um 
What do you what do you, what's your name? What who me? Yeah, you. My name's Leo, Leo Coast. Leo. And and what are the names of everyone else? Well, there's Korga, there's Tamis, Kyle, uh that one fucking guy, the other that other guy, and then uh Fritz. <laughs> And, and, and your name one more time, Tor, Tor, Tora, Torma? No, man, my name's Leo. Leo. Oh, okay. Korga, Tamis, Kyle, that one fucking guy, Fritz, and Leo, yep. and that other fucking guy. Yep. Was Tamis the one Runar had watch with? Yep. Okay, I can't. Good. Leo, uh, uh, do you do you like these guys? You know, this has been. This has been a hell of a crew, man. You know, I've made some good friends here. You know, lifelong friends, you know. I mean, the kind that kind of guys that'll stick up for you when you need it and steal from you when you're not looking. Uh, shit can go either way out here, but I'll tell you I feel I feel lucky, man. I feel real lucky. Well, I do want to I just want to say, you know, it wasn't my idea to kill everyone on the on the deck. Hey man, you know what? No judgment. You uh, you had to do what you had to do, and you I know. Mean, you didn't have to though. I definitely, I definitely well, wanted to. Okay, so you them. murdered a bunch of helpless people. I mean, well, they weren't. They were far from helpless. I mean, shit. But, I mean, all I'm saying is like, we we needed to get on this boat, and we did. And I'm really sorry about what happened, but like, um, I would really prefer it, it something like that didn't happen again. Yeah, so right. I mean, and if, and if these are really your friends, I, I think it'd be I think it'd be really good if uh, if if from now on uh, you guys were my friend too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, shit. It seems easy enough. I mean, the cool, co cool. The, the coin certainly helped. And uh, hey, uh, good to meet you. What What did you say your name was again? Ah, uh, Byron. Byron Hearn. Byron Hearn, good to meet you. How'd you, uh, how'd you end up thrown in with the with the Deg Gang? It seems a little aggressive. Well, you know, it's kind of it's kind of a weird story. You know, I uh, have, have you heard of a uh, of a man named Albrecht Grallion? Uh, no, I can't say that I have. Ah, uh, well, uh, he was murdered, and. I was who killed him? Uh, and trying to figure out who did it. I, you know, I, I still don't know, and it's driving me nuts. I'm obsessed. I got I got to figure it out. Yeah, um, it's driving me nuts. Arr, matey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but nuts. Uh, you know, it's uh, who? It's, well, I mean, you know, why do you even I'm, care I'm, about uh, this guy? What's the deal? Uh, that's a long story that I'd rather, I'd prefer not to get into just know, yet. No problem. But, no uh, problem. I understand. But yeah, you know, uh, uh, Runar Deg just happened to be um, nearby when uh, when I was beginning my investigation, and I, you know, I, he's a powerful man. I've seen him. I've heard. Kill thirty people with his bare hands. Jesus like it Christ! Was no, nobody's business. He's he's a savage. Oh, seriously? Yeah, he's a crazy man. I've seen him do some crazy things. Wow. Well. Thank the gods that we uh, that we live. Then I guess. I mean. Yeah, I mean. I mean, I've heard stories. I... Oh, shit, man. I don't know if the stories could do justice. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it. Well, I mean, uh, you'll have no trouble from us. I guarantee. Uh, we're oh, all... I know, I know. We're... I I can tell we're 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 gonna be cool, man. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. It's I appreciate all good. I appreciate us chatting, man. Uh, I'm I'm not actually gonna do a lot of watching. Yeah, I I can take I'll, um, I'll take care of it. Yeah, you, you just chill out, man. You just You're great, relax. Dude. You're great. Uh, Here, let me roll a perception awesome. check real quick. Yeah, yeah, I totally got this. <laughs> I, uh, you know, they put me on watch all the time, so uh, no big deal. I got this. You, you uh, just kick back and relax. You're awesome. Thank you so much. Um, just watch it. And I'm going <laughs> to take out Aubrey's journal and start reading. <laughs> all right. Yeah, that's all right. yeah you're going to go ahead and use... Uh, Use your watch as a short rest to investigate. Go ahead and roll an investigation check. 
Oh, yeah. nice. nice. Okay. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Give me a that's second here. That's the best here. case scenario for me right now. Yeah, that's a really good one. Hold on a sec. Let's see. If I had rolled really low, yeah. I was going to just go back to sleep. <laughs> Well, is it different for every like? Uh, it's two. Is it a different section so, like, for every roll? Yeah, or so like it... I have to roll above numbers to unlock um, things, and uh, if I don't ro roll above them, then I don't get anything. So, do you discover more with a good roll? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Nice. More and more. Um, there's like different levels of importance. Okay. Nice. So let's this see. gets me to a tier two. I cannot actually get to a tier three without improving my intelligence or getting somebody else with higher intelligence to help me. I have just shared with you journal entry number 12. Aha. <laughs> nice job. Okay. Um, your, your watch goes by otherwise uneventful. And uh, morning comes with a beautiful sunrise uh, over the Azure Sea. Um, and you guys have another beautiful day ahead of you. The birds are, are kind of swarming you guys a little bit. There's gulls flying overhead, kine. Um, Those are chum in the water. Yep. There is, uh, you know, you look overboard and the bodies have obviously floated away or sank, but um, you guys have a bright, new, beautiful day ahead of you. And, uh, yeah, you've got a ship. Nice. You've taken over the, uh, the sea ghost. Uh, how much, how many hit dice do you recover after a long rest? Uh, yeah. You recover half of your level. I believe so it is. We would take. We would recover two. Yep. So it's rounded down. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of which, <laughs> Dave, weren't we gonna level up soon? You guys need some downtime to level up, which you have not taken yet. Okay. So you'd need some in-game wow. downtime, a couple of days. Which we're right. planning on having after we drop off this stuff at the mine. Right. Okay. Beautiful days on the sea. Sweet. So your plan is to sail uh, east and uh, anchor near the Dwarven Mine, uh, utilizing the smaller boat that you have to transport the mining equipment and the brandy and foodstuffs that you recovered back to the, the Dwarven Mine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then head to Salt Marsh. Uh, then kind of dick around for a couple days. Yeah, I think um, we should take our break. So that we can break. pretend we're picking up these guys someplace else. Yeah. I think we should plan that downtime soon. Mm -hmm. So the sooner you get to a port, I guess, the sooner you can have like legitimate downtime that would help you with your okay. quest to right. level up. Ah. It's not going to happen on the boat. Let's put it that way. Okay. 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 All right. So why don't why don't we plan on this then? We'll drop off the supplies and um, sail to our salt marsh and plan on taking our downtime there. Does that work? Yeah. We just need to make sure we take the day or two also at sea to say like, yep, we sailed the sea and then back. Um, yeah. But that doesn't mean that doesn't need to count to down as downtime. And we could actually probably write that time off functionally as. You know, the couple of us with sailing backgrounds, you know, getting used to the boat and the nooks and crannies, uh, and then the two characters who aren't really sailors kind of giving them the rough, okay, this is how you don't fall off the boat. Here's how you tie a knot. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, three I mean, of the four of us have sailor could, or some could, form of sea background. I think it's just Erin that doesn't have a sailing background. Yeah. True. Frankly, the characters themselves could use a couple of days of downtime. Oh, yeah, you guys have been mm -hmm. at it for a couple of days. I mean, between, couple you know, you weeks. guys have been at it since the the Fight Club, then you went straight to the wharf or the warehouse incident, and then yeah. straight to the Dwarven Mine, uh, yeah. and the last couple of days exploring and traveling back and forth. It's been, yeah, you guys are you guys are due for some time. A no-holds-barred pirate fest. Yep. 
So here's what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll stop here. Uh, we'll pick up next Thursday with a little bit of sailing uh, 101. And then we will uh, eventually that'll take us to the, Dw the Dwarven Mine um, where you can return stuff. Head back to Salt Marsh, collect your reward from the town council yeah. for uh, putting down this smuggling ring. Uh, decide what you want to do with some of the cargo, and then uh, we can take your um, downtime. And then, depending on how much time we have left after that, we can we can start up with the next phase of the adventure. Sounds good. Sweet. Nice job, guys. Hell yeah! Some I have good. a, I have a few pirate jokes now. <laughs> nice. What's a pirate's favorite letter? R. You would think it'd be R, but it's the C. Oh, nice! Wow, he threw us for a loop there. Uh, how much does it cost to be a pirate? How much? On uh, an uh, arm and a leg. <laughs> Nice. Oh boy. Yeah. I got, I got one more. I got one more. Uh, what does a pirate say on his 80th birthday? What? I don't know. What does he say? I'm 80. I'm 80. Okay, that I'm 80. Really good. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty That's good. Horrible. I love it. You know why pirates you know make what? such great You know what? Stuff. I think that that uh, that earns you an inspiration point. <laughs> uh, yes! I have. Hey. I don't think I've ever given out an inspiration point, but no, there you, you go. Haven't. You now you have one. Yes. Congratulations. What are Thank those you. for? Yeah. Uh, you can use this to get advantage. Yep. Okay. Oh, I see. Basically, like re-roll. If you have a bad roll, you can re-roll it. Awesome, guys. Well. I'm excited. You guys have a boat. You've got, uh, you've accomplished something pretty big, and you guys should be proud of yourselves. Nice. You've made some I'll new friends. I'll be even more proud when we get to next Thursday. Yep. <laughs> Which could happen any second now. You've learned a little bit more about Dralian's journal. I don't know if you want to share that with the rest of the group. I can certainly do that right now if you want me to. Yeah, yeah. Um, That'd be cool. I'm definitely going to be sharing that with everyone at some point, so I'll just tell you guys right now, like... A little light reading. Um, Anders Solmore. Uh-huh. I think he's behind Albrecht's murder, just based on... <laughs> well, that's well, an immediate jump, but hey, what's up? Well, I mean, it's kind of... I mean, it maybe it is reaching, uh, but I mean, I kind of had an idea. He's the town what's guard up? guy. Or no, I'm thinking of Fireborn. Um... Ender Somer is the the fishing magnet. Yeah. Yep. So he's been trying to acquire um, uh, Obrick's holds for a while, I guess, and he sent agents calling twice, uh -huh. um, and he's constantly been like, "No." Like he's 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 continuing to resist the guy, but he keeps sending the guys to come talk to him. So like I, I don't know uh, maybe I am reaching but like yeah, the, the the whole you know follow the money angle is never a terrible angle that's, right that, that's a very specific passage yes it is interesting so I think we should investigate him when we get back to salt marsh as well uh -oh. after some downtime I mean yeah I mean even during downtime I mean it, it's I mean it's really easy to just drink uh, and chat isn't it uh, no. no, no, we're gonna take some downtime. Have you met us? Yeah, no, that'll. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but I mean, Farandir's not here anymore, so. Remember you don't have to. How... Remember how we were gonna just do an easy job and we burned <laughs> down the fucking <laughs> whole building. We didn't burn that. Always well, expect yeah, shit to go sideways we? and then set a vampire loose. Hey, I wasn't there for that. <laughs> we had such honest uh, intentions in that journey. I was looking for a lost guy, and oh, there's a vampire. Yep. Some lady's missing her husband. Yep. Vampire. <laughs> vampire. 
legendary action vampire. Yeah. That could have could have been could have gone worse though. He could have killed all yeah. of you guys. Yeah, I almost died. We could be playing a different died. campaign right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you're not wrong. So I was, was one roll from dying there. Yeah, it was really freaking close. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh my! Uh, so my thought is, you know, depending on what you guys want to do, but the sort of the first act of the campaign would be sort of the conclusion of the salt marsh uh, slash Dralian's murder sort of arc. Okay. And then you know the next act two um, would be a little bit more exploration based, sort of open ended, but. I mean, obviously, I'm throwing a bunch of plot hooks at you guys to consider. So, right. I mean, uh, depending on what your characters would end up wanting to do or persuading each other or how you want to pr proceed. Um, my, my thought as the DM is to try to direct you guys towards traveling south to explore Dralian's, um, what he was after. That's what, when uh, Byron started talking about having a plan, thought Theo was like, don't tell me you want to sail south. Don't tell me you want to sail south. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, the I player is totally south. down. The character is just like, oh, God. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I totally get that, too. And I was, I was talking with uh, Kirk about that, because Byron would most likely want to follow the thread of the Seekers, oh. right? Oh, yes, absolutely. So he would probably try to convince you guys who are maybe a little bit less less eager to go that way but anyhow that's kind of what i was thinking but i mean if you guys wanted to do something else we could do that too but anyways that's still a little ways off we've still got a couple things to wrap up um in salt marsh sweet fellas well i'm looking forward yeah. to next week it should be fun for real for real all right guys have a great night yeah all right. thanks you as well all right bye-bye everyone yeah that was fun bye.